I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Yeah. Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. Yeah. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. <laughs> Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Please invite your friends and let us have some good time together. Uh, you know, I saw somebody in the chat saying uh, we will do one topic at a time. We always will do one topic at a time. And all of them, they end in one direction. Muhammad is a fraud. And as long as we see some Muslims in the chat, I would like to welcome them to join us and call me live on air. And I will be sure to open my Skype so all Muslims can call us. Now for sure we will come those who claim to have knowledge, but sadly those who claim to have knowledge they are potatoes and they don't dare to call me. Uh, as an example you will see a Muslim make a response to me, uh, 1,000 lies, 2,000 lies, 5,000 lies of a Christian prince, but none of those little boys dare to call me for a second and quote one lie for me, because simply they knew that they are no match. So uh, our Skype is open, and uh, if there is any Mohammedan would like to call us, please feel free. There's millions of videos, articles, speeches about the amazing Prophet Muhammad. He is the trustworthy. He is the trustworthy. But how we don't understand. Muhammad is the most amazing. How? We don't understand. Muhammad is a prophet. How? Nobody understand. You know, when you say even there is somebody is a prophet, shouldn't he have a prophecy Prophecy, and he the prophecies come to be true? If you question, if you, this, you, know, the, the, you know, the Muslims, uh, when they make videos, uh, as an example, um, the discovery in the Quran, what is discovery? A scientific discovery. In two minutes, you will find that this scientific discovery is a fraud. And that is telling us a lot about this religion. Because if this religion is from God, why the followers of those of this God, they lie about their prophet? It doesn't make sense. See, when you, when you see somebody who is religious, you assume at least he will be honest when it's come to his religion. You see, all of us, we do sin, all of us, we are sinners, and nobody claimed to be, you know, uh, uh, you know, for us as a Christian, at least, nobody claimed to be the good, uh, the good person, because only God is good. And the Bible confirmed that. Uh, but Muslims, they worship, there is God, his name is Muhammad, and they fabricated millions of articles. And just to prove what I'm saying is true, I will come any Muslim, or Muhammadan from the religion of the Abdulism, Muhammadanism, to call us right now. My Skype is open and prove me wrong. As an example, Muhammad was a trust more trustworthy. I have no idea how this person was trustworthy. Even the Muslims, they are their own website. They you know they, they explain that Muhammad was a caravan rider. He kidnapped women from their husbands. He raped them. 
he go to his own son wife he flirt with the wife when the husband is not there and then he forced the husband to divorce his wife obviously so he can have her and then the Muslims in their books they write that the Prophet he have at least 16 privilege about nine of them is about his private part to the point if the Prophet his eyes fall into a woman he like her her husband must divorce her so the Prophet can boom boom with her so how in the world this man is a trustworthy now as you see I am coming in a time which is not usual usually I come either early morning in my time or late at night mostly early morning so now not many people here but I, you know I hope people will invite more people so we can get more uh, people to join and learn do we have any Muslim would like to call I see in the chat we have somebody his name is games uh, gaming tips that's a good name do you do you know what do you know about gaming gaming tips do you like to call us and tell us about gaming tips because I believe Islam is a game and it's a, it's a really bad game he has an example you know it's one of the games of Muhammad that you can do all kind of adultery killing theft uh, you name it I mean all kind of crazy stuff and then there is a game you go and go around the Kaaba <laughs> seven times or uh, touching the black stone and the Yemeni corner will erase your sin I mean this is a nice game who can beat that let us be honest here you spend the whole year doing as much as you wish look at this game this is one of the games thank you gaming tips for giving us the tips you know your name is an inspiration for us I think you have a connection with Jibreel look what your prophet said is anyone uh, incapable of er earning 1000 uh, uh, hasana hasana which means reward in a day okay what does that mean someone from the gathering asked how can anyone of us earn a thousand reward he said okay glorify Allah 100 time and a thousand hasana will be written for you and the 1000 reward will wipe 1000 sin you did <laughs> look how nice the game <laughs> so every day you go rape you go kill you do steal you do all the garbage and then at the end of the day before you go to bed say 100 times a praise be to Allah subhanallah 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 <laughs> You know, here you see the stupidity of the founder of this cult. Because how easy it is to fix the society. You see, he's not fixing the society by making you decent. He is fixing the society by going to do whatever you want and then say, Subhanallah, 100 times. What a funny, silly game. Is that really God talking, talking to Muhammad? teaching Muhammad how he earned heaven until now we have nothing but Muslims complain in the chat but until now I don't see any Muhammadan you know all the Muhammadans who come to us the ones who call uh, they complain as an example about Christian Prince they say Christian Prince is lying okay how Christian Prince is lying just to show you the drama of this this religion I will give you an example. <clears throat> um, this hadith as an example. We say to the Muslims, your prophet, he is the prophet who was able to discover that the sun set in a murky water and it's a spring of boiling water, actually. How the Muslim refute this? They say, CP, this hadith reported by Uthman, the son of Abi Sayba, and Ubaidullah ibn Umar, the son of Maisara. 
And then Yazid ibn Harun, he is the one who taught them. From Sufyan, the son of Hussein. From Al Hakam bin Atayba. From Ibrahim al Taymi. From his father. From Abu Abu Dhar. Abu Dhar. <laughs> they say, okay, just to get an example, you know. Ibrahim al Taymi is known to be a, a person who makes things up. Okay? And because of that, uh, you know, we don't accept this hadith. This is how the Muslims get me busted by saying it's a lie. And the funny is, those Muslims, the one who wrote the hadith, the one who you know collected the hadith, the one even call it Sahih in chain, <laughs> and they have no problem with it. Sahih or Isnad, actually, you know, <laughs> nobody have a problem with it. But today, because it's an embarrassment, we have to find a way to get away from it. So what we will do? What the Muslims trying to say to us that Muslims are a bunch of liars and they fabricate stories about their prophet. Their prophet did not say that. Their prophet never said that. But there is some Muslims, brother, who they are really evil, brother. They fabricate stories, brother, about the prophet, alhamdulillah. My friend uh, Tundra, focus with us. Do you see us are talking about, about Baha'i and Druze? Who care about those things? For Baha'i is not a religion. Baha'i is a collection of stupidity. Uh, Baha'i is a, like a bunch of hippies, you know, they want to, uh, it's a religion for everybody. You know, like if you are a mental, you join uh, this Baha'i. That's why the Israelis supported them. And the Druze, uh, you see, I don't appreciate people asking questions that have nothing to do with topic. This is telling you that the people who join us, they are suffering from the flight of thought like Muhammad. I mean, we are talking about something, and then somebody posts something, and this why I need to all this, this I will chat. Focus, focus. But as long as you ask me, I will answer you this time. The Druze are, are a kind or a branch of the Shia, but the Druze are not really Muslims. The Druze, they believe. They have like different version of Islam, let's say. They believe that Al Hakim bi Allah al Fatimi, he was Allah on the ground in the earth, and his son is Hamza al Bahlawan. And there is seven letters between the father and the son. Al Hakim bi Allah is the caliphate of Egypt during the Fatimi state. He sent seven letters to his spiritual son Hamza, who was nothing but a gang and caravan rider. And this is the book of the Druze. The Druze don't really care for the Quran, they care for the book is called Rasail al Hikmah, which means the letters of wisdom. Anyway, so focus with me, please, and don't ask silly questions, have nothing to do with the topic. When we are done of everything, and I say who have a question, different question, you can give me those questions. Now, what is the problem with this story? The problem is that this story showing that Muhammad obviously is a fraud. Very simple. But this story is exist in the Quran too. So what we do when we show the Muslims the Quran saying the same thing, the Muslim they have to come with different uh, a different answer. So if we go in the Quran as an example, chapter 18 verse number 86. Chapter 18, verse number 86, where it says that the sun set in a murky water and who found it? Zulkarnayn. The Muslim here, they start getting their imagination to fix it. They say, this is from the perception of Zulkarnayn. It's not Allah who saying that the sun set in murky water. But read with me carefully. Do you see anywhere it says what the Muslim are saying to us? Do you see where it says that this is how it's appeared to him? Uh, did Allah say the word it appeared to Zulqarnayn this way? No, this is Allah is talking, this is not Zulqarnayn. So this person, he kept going until he found where the sun set. He found it setting in a spring of black muddy. Actually, it's not really, uh, uh, you know, Hamia is, uh, uh, you know, because it's boiling with the with the mud, 
so it is muddy and uh, like you know that you see those uh, what they call it uh, like if you have a volcano you will see like a gray water coming boiling or very hot so this is what the water we are talking about so the one is talking here is not even Zulkarnayn it is Allah and you will notice here many mistakes in one in one uh, phrase until when he reached the sitting place of the sun. What is that? So obviously the author of the Quran, Aka Muhammad, he is so foolish, copy from a story written by somebody from Syria about Zulkarnayn, a fiction story. Zulkarnayn is a real person, by the way, but it's not his name, Zulkarnayn. This is a silly name from the fiction story. His real name, Alexander the Great. So Alexander the Great, who used to horn two horn, uh, he conquered the whole world. So the story is making, I mean, the, the, old, the old world, let's say. So the story was written by this Syrian uh, uh, author, uh, the fiction story, speaking about a guy with a two horn, did not mention his name. And this person, uh, he went all the way until he found the sitting place of the sun. This is what the Quran is saying. The foolish Muhammad, he copied the story as it is from that fiction story. And he added in his book. Do you see how stupid Muhammad is? Here you will notice that Muhammad is not trustworthy because if his God told him that, well, his God is not trustworthy too. If his God did not tell him that, that means Muhammad is not trustworthy too because this is simply a false story. I want a link for you to debate. Uh, uh, he wants a link for me to debate. Let's call this guy. <clears throat> if you are if you are a Muslim and you'd like to you know to join us, please feel free. We will be happy to have you. I'm muting the ringing. Until the Abdul he answers, so we don't know know you with the uh, with the ringing. Uh, any Muslim he claimed to have a beard, a sheikh, uh, especially if you claim to be uh, an imam of a mosque or somebody have knowledge, please feel free and call us and uh, give us the best you have. Obviously, Muslims they cannot defend their religion, and obviously Islam is a scam. Well, this guy is not answering, so forget about him. If there is any Muslim would like to call us and tell us how Muhammad became a prophet, how in the world a person he claimed to be a prophet he says such a stupid story, and and what the point of this story? What is the point? A bunch of Jews they come to Muhammad to make fun of him, and obviously Muhammad he took the trap. He is a fool. They ask him, tell us about Zilkarnain, the prophet of Allah. The guy, the idiot, he spoke to him as if he is a prophet, just because the Jews, they said to him, tell us about him. So the Jews always, they play with this idiot, and Muhammad always fell into their trap. Any Muhammadan? Do we have any brave Muslim would like to call us and tell us how Muhammad is a prophet? How Muhammad is trustworthy. How Muhammad can be listened to. Is Muhammad mentally ill? Well, there is many proofs that Muhammad is mentally ill. And again, the Muslim, they will say to you, you will find a million videos made to refute the Christian prince. And by the way, Christian prince never respond. <laughs> so, so what I'm doing here every day? <laughs> I don't respond to idiots. I respond to Islam. Let us see. <coughs> we are calling this guy. Let's see if he will answer. <coughs> Hello? Hello, Sipi. Yes, my friend. We are live on air. What do you like to say to us? Uh, no, I was not planning to come on air. I just wanted to link you with a guy, one of my friends. 
who is willing to uh, debate you. Your friend will debate me? Yeah, I said he wanted to debate you because I, I, I told him about you and then I showed him your video and he was okay, convinced you, that you okay, wanted is, is he next to you or is it was your friend? Uh, no, he, 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 he is back home in Nigeria and I'm in Canada, so I have to talk to him and I'll okay. fix it. Hey, my time. friend, if you like, you can text him and uh, he can join us. Thank you for calling. All right. All right thank you. Yeah. Please, guys, don't call me. Don't text me. We want Muslims to text us. You calling me, texting me doesn't make any difference for me. Because we want people to see how Muslims, you know, you want to see two sides of the story. You're not like the Muslims. The Muslims, they make an interview. Or let's say two Muslims, they start bashing Christianity. And they laugh at Christianity. <laughs> you know, this is easy, you know, talking to yourself, right? You always win. Hmm? This is how Muslims, they really, uh, they, they claim that they can refute us. And if they want to make a debate, if we can call it a debate, Muslims always, they choose carefully, they will debate who? A person who do not know much. As simple as that. Because the maximum, the maximum he says something, we will say to him, you do not know Arabic, you do not know the meaning. Here we go. Right? When Mimi Hijab, our sister Mimi, she was debating uh, David Wood. Uh, David Wood, he says, your God, Allah have two hands. Mimi, he said to him, who said so? <laughs> I know this is coming. You don't speak Hebrew, you don't speak Arabic. That's it. The problem solved. So, uh, uh, Muslims always they play the game of mockery to avoid the question. And they play the game of you don't speak Arabic to avoid answering to. With those, with me, those things, both of them didn't work. Because you do mockery, I will whip the floor with your face. You want to speak Arabic? I am an Arab. You want to speak about knowledge? Try me. So who is a Muslim who dare? You see, I'm not uh, David Wood with the blue eyes. You can lie to and I don't know what to say to you. This is why no, they don't dare. I mean, all those Muslims, they claim they can refute me. I saw before I start, somebody saying EF Dawa. I don't know why they even call themselves EF Dawa. That's a good name, EF Dawa. Uh, they claim they can, you know, okay, give me the Skype, I will call them right now. Give me the EF Dawa Skype, let them text me. I will call them right now. They can go on their channel. Fair? Is that fair, guys? So all those kids, like this EF Dawa, they said, that uh, 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 when the word in the Quran says a solb, a solb mean the male member. I never heard of somebody saying such a stupid thing that a solb is a male member. They were talking about, you know, I didn't watch their video, but somebody sent me a video of them. It was funny, stupid, like them. So the guy who is supposedly an expert, he says, if you open a dictionary, okay, let us open a dictionary. <laughs> Why not open dictionary to people so they can see in the dictionary you are talking about? So people will, will laugh at you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you see here even the word solba who trusts it as meaning his back, meaning his back. This is solb, 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 solb from the back, from the back, from the back, backbone, backbone. You see it in the Abduls of F Dawa. And they get the perfect name again, F Dawa. It's here you go. This is your translation. Backbone. So the backbone suddenly became the 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 the, the, the private part of the man. Those are the ones who will dare to do this is why they will never dare to get too close to me. It takes us two seconds to make them shish kebab. Right? I mean, what is that? I, so I, they get the, they get the name for you know they choose the perfect name if Dawa what is that you know all the Muslims hadith says that the soul mean uh, the backbone the backbone the backbone the spine the backbone the backbone look 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 you know backbone even even when uh, uh, when they speak about uh, uh, Adam, you know, uh, 
Uh, read, read carefully with me here. <laughs> God made the covenant from of uh, of uh, from Adam back. <laughs> he made the covenant, <laughs> and here in translation, this says, uh, "From his loins, all of his offspring." What, what loins? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you know Islam is a comedy and Muslims are like salesmen trying to make Islam look good you go to a car dealer he will sell you a piece of a trash and he will do his best to make you to, to make you believe that this is the best uh, uh, car ever in the in the world you know you need to buy it this car if you go now for five minutes you come back you will not find it okay and if you are a fool you will believe him you know you forgot that he's a car dealer and then you take it home and then you find that this car, the car is screwed up and he will say to you well uh, <coughs> uh, sorry sir did you see the policy you sign you know when you sign the paper <laughs> so this is your prophet explaining the backbone but the muslim they say this is not the backbone it is uh, uh, the private part brother and why they are saying this is not the backbone because simply uh, it's embarrassment Muhammad uh, you know he claimed that this has been taught by his God so how a sperm of the man is coming from the backbone and the sperm of the women is coming from the ribs and since women the women they have a sperm anyway uh, stupidity yeah what you can say what you can say until now we have zero Abdul I noticed that before I go live we have many Abduls in the chat after I go live it's not the same even the chat is dry from the Muslims huh? any Abdul <clears throat> uh, you look like Muhammad he never heard of the word testicles and uh, you know as usual Muhammad is a is a mentally ill person who claimed to be educated in the time of ignorance so you know who was going to get him busted at that time in the Arabian Peninsula when they are a bunch of ignorant too but even at that time even they are a bunch of ignorant you know, Arab at that time, they were making fun of the stupidity of Muhammad. Even the Arab, who they are not educated, they are not like the Greek people or still, they were they were laughing at the stupidity of Muhammad. Prove me wrong. Who want to call me life? Who is it from those who make videos to refute me? They are to let me call him. Don't call me, I will call you. Anyone? Any Abdul? So all of them they can refute me. How they can refute me? It doesn't say that, CP. This is hadith as mentioned by Uthman. Uthman taught it by Hassan. Hassan taught it by Zucchini. Zucchini taught it by cucumber. Cucumber taught it by uh, uh, elevator. The elevator was broken at that day, so it cannot be from the Prophet. So they do all kind of a tricks to avoid the stupidity of their prophet. Why? Because they are ashamed of Muhammad. That's the whole story. That's the whole story. And look, they are adding the word loins, loins. It's not a backbone, no, no more. Hmm? Yeah. Any Abdul? Anyone? Any smart Muslim would like to contact me and tell us live on air if Muhammad is a prophet or not? What do you think? Anyone? Look like there's no more proud Muslims, sadly. 
they don't want to be proud what I can do uh, how many time I said people don't don't text me and people they keep texting me especially if you are a female go and text a female like you do we have any Abdul anyone Can you have one? <clears throat> no? Okay, any quarter Muslim? No? Okay, well, it looks like the Muslims are became real these days. Uh, they left Islam. That's wonderful. I'm so happy to, to see this. There's no Muslim left. Thank you, God. You know, Islam, Muslims, they've been saved, and they, now they are joining Christianity, and they are not proud about their prophet no more. So all those videos in YouTube are a scam. This is the truth. You know? The trustworthy prophet, the amazing prophet, the intelligent prophet. Just to show you how intelligent Muhammad is. Just an example. Who can beat this intelligence? Nobody. According to the smartest prophet ever in earth, that if you have orgasm first, the baby will be a boy and will look like you. If the women have orgasm first, the baby will be a girl will look like her. Who can beat that? To be honest with you, nobody. Come on. We have a person, his name is Wasim Ali, and he is calling me coward princess. Well, Wasim, what about you give me your Skype and let us see who is the coward? Is that fair, guys? As long as you see, we, we allow even Muslims to post comment calling me names. If you go to Muslim page, if you if you if you insult the one who is running uh, the program, he will block you right away and he will say not only he will not let you talk, he will hire your text. So why you don't call me? Let us see who is the princess and the coward. What say you? Are you a man enough to call me? What do you think, people? Wasim Ali sound like an Arabic name, so he speak Arabic perfect. So that will help him to get me busted if I'm lying. So what say you, Wasim? Let us see who is the coward. If you say you will not call me, that's mean your mom. Uh, she did not allow you. Or your wife, maybe because you did not wash dishes. We don't know. Hmm? Any Abdul? All of you are brave. All of you. You see, when the Israeli army come, you run. All of you are brave. And the Quran, by the way, says that the Israeli hide behind their walls. And then we look for the Muslim, we found them under the ground. They don't even have walls. They make tunnels. What the heck? All of you are so brave. And you call me princess to insult, supposedly, right? Who is the princess here? Change your name. Call yourself Wasima. You, you, by the way, Wasim means pretty. You are pretty. MashaAllah. You are pretty. You are more pretty than the Prophet Muhammad? And you know what this is the what this is about the pretty Muhammad? What's wrong with you, Muslims? There's a million videos about how pretty Muhammad was. I mean, this is the most stupid. Have you ever seen one Christian making a videos about how good looking Jesus was? I mean, who care? Are we talking about, is that a fashion show? 
Muhammad is going in the competition for pretty queen, beauty queen, the pretty prophet. You must even describe his Billy Bomb. I mean, how far the madness go? How white under his arm? How white is his thigh? How white his face? The white man worshippers. Was Muhammad really so pretty? Do you think he was so pretty? So do you think that Allah will not send anyone to be a messenger unless he is so pretty? Uh, and then we check, we find that Muhammad, the pretty Muhammad, sorry, I cannot say Muhammad. Anymore. From now on, we will not say Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We will say Prophet, beauty queen. Uh, <clears throat> even the angels who came to Muhammad, he was so pretty too. There's a boyfriend of Muhammad. He slept with his wife before him. The one who they raped first. Among the captive was Safiya. First she was given to the Hil Kalbi. Okay, who is the Hil Kalbi? This is the same guy who, who Jibreel came in his look. <laughs> okay, wh why Jibreel came in the look of the Hil Kalbi? Because he's so pretty. <laughs> Read carefully. <laughs> The angel Zibril, brother, he come to the nearest resemblance, you know, of the Hiyal Kalbi. This is translation, not my translation. Okay, why Jibril is coming? He looked like this guy, the boyfriend of Muhammad. So now we have two the Hiyal Kalbi in town. Which one is, is the one? Like you go now in the town, you will find like a hundred thousand Santa Claus. Okay, but which one is the real one? This is the same in Islam now. So we have the Hiyal Kalbi, the real person. We have the Hiyal Kalbi, the angel. And why Muhammad, he come with this lie that this Hiyal Kalbi is the one who is coming to him as an, supposedly as an angel because he used to stay all night in his house and it's fishy. I mean, what this guy is staying late in your house? So he said, okay, well, this is the angel Jibreel. You know? Yeah. The Kalbi. Do we have any person can call us and tell us something good about the pretty prophet? You know, when the Muslim they make videos about the description of Prophet Muhammad and then there's a back ground music like and the guy he says, I look at the prophet, I look at the moon. I look at the prophet. I look at the moon. I look at the prophet. I look at the moon. Come tomorrow, you know. I look at the prophet. I look at the moon. I look like what the heck? All of this to describe the prophet how pretty he is. Okay, he is more pretty than the moon. And uh, by the way, is the moon pretty anyway? I mean, what what do you mean? I look at the prophet. Ah, uh, because he's white. They worship. They are white man worshippers. Hmm? Do we have any Abdul? He have anything to say to us about his religion? Look all these stories in the front of me. I mean, I cannot find even a decent story to tell you. But the most funny uh, story happened like, ten days ago, is when Mimi Hijab he recited verse, verses from the Quran, and he uh, supposedly. Uh, uh, this guy, what his name, Patterson, he said to him, "I don't understand why you are, uh, you know, chanting Quran in Arabic." Maybe uh, Hijab, he says, well, "Because we believe that this is Quran have a special, uh, you know, yeah, you know the thing, you know." The coward, Mimi Hijab, he did not tell him uh, that the this the same chapter clean that if you recite the Quran, this chapter is specifically to a person, he will collapse even if it's a mountain. So Mimi decided to recite the Quran and then later he added some echo to it. Had we sent down this Quran on the mountain, we surely have seen it humbling himself. Okay, here we go. You recite the Quran on me. I'm not a mountain. I'm, I'm laughing at it. The experiment of Islam is not working. 
Hold on, you remind me of something. Let me go to private YouTube. There's a sheikh, his name is Al-Uraifi. Very well known Saudi sheikh. This guy, they invited him, I think it was to France. <clears throat> Let us see if we can find it. Here we go. Let us see if this is the one. Huh. So this guy, this sheikh, he said, uh, if there is any foreigner here don't speak Arabic, there's a French guy, he does not know Arabic, he is not a Muslim. So they want to prove to people that when you recite the Quran, by nature you will you, know, you will choose the, the, uh, 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 the real Quran, you know, because the Quran is amazing. Uh, this is not the video, hold on, let me find the video. This is not the one. This is a comment about the videos. I, I want to find the video. So anyway, uh, a guy he put his hand up, and he don't know. I don't know. He don't know Arabic, and he's a French. So he told him, "I'm going to show you. I'm going to say two chapter, two uh, two verses from the Quran. Uh, two Quran. One is fake. One is real. And your heart will lead you because this is what the Quran says. Your heart will lead you to the true one." And this is the video I found it. And this was called today the chapter of that apple. Because this guy he made Quran look like the Quran of Muhammad. And this is telling you anyone can make Quran. Here we go. Actually, this is cut off from the video. I wish I can find the, the, the whole one. And now he's asking him, okay, so the first one and there is a second one. The first one is the real Quran. The second one is the fake Quran. But he did not tell him which one. He said, which which one you think your, your heart make you fail into? The first one or the second one? Guess what he chose? <laughs> he chose the, the false Quran. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shadows don't choose bad you know don't force me to block you why are you all calling them filthy supposedly you are the clean you know everybody you know we are here to help the muslims not to call them filthy my friend if somebody is a filthy is a filthy all right When somebody does something filthy, then you call him filthy. You don't say any filthy Abdul. So here a great example of the stupidity of Islam. The Quran says, you know, this Quran, anyone, even the genie converted to Islam when they listen to it. So what the Muslim they do, they bring a guy, he have a nice voice, and he start singing. And because you are a foreigner, you do not know what he's singing, you might like it. You know, the same as you see people liking uh, Indian songs. You know, people shaking their heads and you, know, you, you watch an Indian movie from the middle of nowhere, you will find like 10,000 women and men, they are dancing. How, where, who care, you know? And you might like it, right? Uh, but maybe if you know the words, you will not like it because words can make a difference. The same as any, many, many songs in English. There's many people, they repeat English words, but it's nothing but the F word, the S, she, ish, I, T word, you know? Those, uh, those filthy Arabic music. There's many kids in the Middle East, they recite them, they like them, you know, they love them. But in reality, they are very filthy, you know. So what is important, what is the word mean? Not this, the voice of a chanter, a chanting person. Give the same Quran for somebody who have a bad voice. You will see the same Quran sounds so stupid. Even if you do not know Arabic, just the same, the voice, you know. If you give a, a newspaper for someone have a nice voice, even if he is reading a newspaper, you will enjoy it. Because his voice is nice. It's not the words he's reciting. Right? 
but they try to fool you and they bring you like you will see all the record of the Quran is done by people who have a very nice voice okay most of them if the Quran is amazing why you need somebody have a nice voice to make the Quran sound nice any one of you actually let us make competition who is a Muslim can call us right now and recite the Quran for us what do you think guys we offer the Muslim what is this guy what is his name uh, Wasim Ali you still alive? Hmm? Uh, somebody, his name is a proud Saudi. He's saying, why you think uh, Britain, Netherlands? Well, you know, my friend, uh, proud, proud Saudi. Uh, I, I like your name, actually. Auladul Bayara. Uh, look what uh, Mr. Proud Saudi is saying. Why do you think Britain, Netherlands, Europe turned into uh, uh, atheism? My friend, as I know, our churches is full. And as I know, uh, if this is the logic you are using, then why a Jazeera TV, which is coming from the border country next to you, saying 16,000 Muslims leave in Islam a day? I will go with your logic. So if a Christianity is fake, and this is the reason, well, that's mean Islam is fake. Even your prophet said that Islam is taught as a small religion will end as a small religion. So I will, go, I will use your logic. If the religion is fake, people will leave from it, correct? The day Muhammad, he died, tens of thousands of Muslims left Islam. Is that correct? <laughs> I mean, the guy, nobody debated him by yet, by the way. There was no internet, there's no YouTube, there's no Christian prince. Muhammad, he died, the news came to them, everybody left Islam. And I challenge you to say to me, this is a lie. What say you? Secondly, what I see is the opposite. Muslims are leaving Islam left and right. Go and watch Mimi Hijab. He asked people for donation, saying last year 176 people, a thousand people left Islam. We are the only one who can defend the brother. So the, they are asking for donation to defend Islam and, the, and, and people in Europe, they became atheist. Yeah. You can make a wish. Hello? Yeah, hi, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, how are you doing? You are yeah, a Muslim? Fine. Uh, I spoke to you a while ago. I think you called me duct tape. Oh, Mr. Duct tape, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. You remember me, yeah? Yeah, actually, hold on. You know what? I have a surprise for you. Now I look at your name. Here we go. It says Muhammad Duct tape. Uh, <laughs> I, ch I, ch I changed your name in Skype, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I changed your name in Skype. I make I, I I change the name and make it Muhammad duct tape because I remember you were out of duct tape trying to fix Muhammad. <laughs> I mean, it's not a, when right. I look back, it's not an easy job, you know. And no, I want no. to so say, what do you want to say to us, uh, Muhammad? Well, I want to say, of course, uh, you said only Muslims can call, but you know, and I'm uh, I'm no longer Muslim, but uh, but I want to say, you know, thank you for you know. Uh, what happened trade. last time you called me? You left Islam. Uh, ever since then, I had to question a couple of things, and I also had uh, a few oh. doubts. So you left Islam I... now? Yeah, I've left. Uh, I've left. But uh... Did you leave Islam when you are talking to me live on air, or you hang up and you are not you did not leave Islam yet? Because I don't remember you left Islam. After I talked to you, I uh, I had ah. to do some th some thinking. Ah, after you talked to me, and you became out of the duct tape, you know, <laughs> there's no more duct tape can fix it. So you decide to leave Islam. That's a good thing. Well, uh, um, uh, even before that, I had a few doubts, but I was still trying my best to uh, uh, defend it. So uh, one of the reasons I called you is to see uh, yeah, how the defense would uh, do, for example, to someone who can, you know, criticize. Uh, and, you know, after seeing criticism and uh, from someone like you that's not afraid to criticize, I've come to the conclusion that I still respect Muslims, but me personally, I'm... Uh, I can't, you know, uh, I, there's too many, like, problems, you know, uh, for this to make sense. 
Yeah. Well, it's not only about making sense. I mean, Islam is stupid in every aspect. Even even the the definition of God in Islam is a stupid definition. You know, uh, when when we ask Muslims who is Allah, they don't know. All what they know, they say the Creator. But the Quran says Allah is the best of the creators. So if Allah is the creator, and then we find in the Quran that Jesus can create from the mother bird, right? And the Quran confirmed that Allah is the best of the creators. So, so how in one hand you say that you are a monotheism religion and you believe in one God. And then in the other hand, your Quran saying that Allah is the best of the creators. And then the Muslim, they try to duct tape as you used to do with me. You know, you say, <laughs> CP, you say CP, if somebody make a bicycle, isn't that make him a creator? No, creator is somebody he can create. It's not somebody oh. he made something. Some, some like if I make a car, I'm not creating a car. You know that no. the steel is there. I mean the the iron is there. All what I did, I just use what is around me to invent something new. But the reality is the creator is someone who can even he can give life. Even the Quran says that. How you can worship somebody, he cannot even create a fly. So the Quran put a def definition for a creation. The one who can create a fly is the one is worthy of worship. The question is, can Allah create a fly? Nobody can no. prove that. And the proof that Allah cannot create a fly, Allah himself do not remember which one he created first. As an example, if I am the one who created the earth and the heaven, shouldn't I remember if I created the mountains first before you the should stars, at least, uh, at yeah. At least you so, should that. yeah. So he cannot even repeat the same story twice. This is what happened. So you see, I can make a Quran right now, claiming to be I'm God, and I can repeat the same story twice without making a stupid contradiction. But this God is so silly, so stupid to the point he cannot even go in order of his creation. Yeah, well, you know, it's uh, just it, and there's even more uh, problematic than what you just mentioned. This is just, uh, you know, the, uh, the, 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 you know, the small problems. You know, I, I was and, going to, I was going to block you, by the way, because you gave me a headache. <laughs> Honestly, you gave me a headache with your duct tape, you know, because whatever I say to you, you try duct tape it, you know, that's why I came with this name. <laughs> but, but I'm surprised now you are calling me and you decide to leave Islam. So did you, what do you think about becoming Christian then? Uh, to be honest, uh, you know, I respect Christians very much, especially if, uh, like you. And uh, But at the same time, I don't think, uh, I think a lot of the problems I had with Islam, I think some of them also is uh, in Christianity. Like what? No, give me one, give me one. Just make, maybe we can help. Well, for example, uh, Christianity, just like Islam, you know, uh, it points a lot of things such as a sinful for example, when a man and uh, and a girl, and uh, you know, a man, their boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, if you're not married, if you're not this, 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 that, it's sinful. It likes mm. to say a lot of natural things are sinful to condemn uh, mm. uh, human okay. life. Let, let, let me let me go with you. You see, if a woman she slept with ten thousand men, is it going to make a difference for her after that to to have ten thousand one ten thousand men and one? So what what is love mean? What is relationship mean? What is uh, special uh, uh, special between me and this woman is? If if I'm going to stay with everybody and she will stay with everybody, so if every few weeks she will have a new guy who says to her, "I love you," she said to him, "I love you" in the bed. Then two weeks after, they leave each other and then they have a new partner. What this what what is this? this is what life is about? I mean, what the what the point of all of this? If this is bad, if, if this is bad, actually this is destroying the society in the West. Single child, single mother, single uh, you know, single parents, and then the child grow and there is no father. He don't even know maybe his father was you know the same as Muslim countries like Muhammad. He was born four years after his father's death, and look what happened. He was born four years after his father's death, so his mother was single mother, and Muhammad was very you know nobody cared for him even to the point they were throwing him out from a house to a house, so. And the the healthy family, you, you know, you, you need to be, you don't, you know, what people today is selfish. Everybody want to just have fun, but the, nobody want to have any responsibility. I, Relationship I is not meant, is not, we are not cats, we are not cats, my friend. We are not dogs, you know, we are human, right? Yeah, yeah, I, okay. I agree with you, you know, you should and have That will, will hurt even the feeling, that will hurt the feeling of the women and the man. 
You will live in drama all your life. You sleep with this woman. Okay, now nine months after she have a baby, and now you left her. This is disaster. This, this is a disaster. What you accomplish, really? Well, you, the, you, the, you, the you, thing you, is, you just not... uh, you just made a, a broken family. Well, uh, the, you, you, it can happen, but you know, uh, it can happen even to a Christian married, uh, even Muslim married uh, a couple that. Uh, the children is uh, the parents are selfish, and uh, that uh, selfishness is uh, yeah. But he, but here, but here, you are doing it on purpose. You know, you are going in, inten in the, the intention of your relationship is to use each other. It's just an, you know, it's use using each other. That's all. You you need a woman. She she need a man. Let us go to bed, and then what? You know, and then after some time, uh, a woman she slept with a thousand men. How many images she have in her head, even when you are sleeping with her? Or the same for you. How many women you remember you step with when you are sleeping with this woman? So this is all is not healthy, and this is not uh, uh, this is not a human. The purpose of uh, uh, of sex, as we believe, it is to create a family, and so a human being will not hesitate to have sex because there is a joy. So God He made the joy to give motivation to the uh, to the uh, women and the men. Uh to do the relationship, you but it should be for you, a reason. Uh, can I ask you personally, you, do you think uh, that uh, humans uh, need God uh, to have uh, morality? To have what? Uh, uh, morality. I don't understand. What do you mean? Uh, you know, to, to you know, uh, if, uh, like, uh, do you need God to believe in God to have morality? You know, Here we go. If, you uh, just told me. Morality. You just told me. You don't like Christianity. Because you know uh, you have to have uh, uh, very careful in your relationship, and uh, you know you can tell me that you have this is your morality, right? But for me, I don't want to insult you. I, I think this I, is not I, I morality. Think you misunderstood my question. That's no. just one example. For example, when it calls something that is natural, uh, Christian to Islam has to say this is sinful and that is sinful and uh, put sin yeah. on you things see, that is, are natural. We believe that and God He created doesn't trust the human yeah, God, to take God, care of himself. Yeah, when when God He created you, He put inside you, let us say, a basic knowledge. As an example, all of us we get disgusted when we see blood. Right? Yeah, that's not. It's true. not. It's not a friendly view to see it. So uh, uh, you do not need. Let us say you are a person who don't join any religion. You do not even have a language. You are from the cave time. But when you see a human being even slaughtered in front of you, this is not a pleasant. Something, something to to you know to to see, right? So, but if you do make it a usual thing, it's going to be unpleasant first time, second time, third time, and then after that is going to be normal. So, God created us with how to know what is unpleasant and what is not, and then what we do, we kill what God gave us, and we keep going in our deception. So when you steal. Uh, you know that this is not right, even if there is no religion. You know that's not yours, right? So you are acting like an animal. Two animals, you know, fighting over a, a, a something. Uh, uh, you will see a male cat is uh, kidnapping the baby cats from the from the mother, and he eat them. He eat them, you know. Okay, but 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 that that make us go back to the animals. We are like animals. We are the human no more. So God, He gave you uh, a kind of moral. You are born with it, but not religion. Not religion. No. For example, you know, uh, uh, when I was Muslim, you know, used to say, "Hey, if you are not using your time, your valuable time, to pray five times a day, then you are doing something sinful. You're not allowed to just mind your business and do work." Well, this, and is, come. this is this is the stupid Islam, you know. For us, yeah. Pray prayer yeah, is, is a and Christianity is something... doesn't do it exactly. It's not as bad, you know. But at the same time, Christianity says, you know, you are sinful because you're Adam, you know, and how and Eve, you know, and no. he puts you. He says you're sinful mm. just because you exist. You no, 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 no. You got it wrong. When we say because of Adam, we are out of heaven. Doesn't mean that uh, Adam is the one who did sin. I did nothing. We believe that when we say the original sin, mean that the original man was sinner, and I am a sinner too. Prove me wrong. If there's anyone who did not do something bad, correct? Well, well, the, the, uh, doesn't matter say, if you're religion say, or not. You know, all of us we do bad, right? Yeah, but let's say a baby that gets born here instead no, of if, uh, a, a baby in Christianity, a baby 
Jesus, he said, if you did not become the same as those little ones, you will not enter the kingdom of my father. So the babies are granted to go to heaven because they commit no sin. But, okay. but for us, adult, we when we talk about original sin, we don't put the blame on Adam. This is a false understanding of Christianity. But we say that Adam was the first and I am the second. That's all. He was my grand grandfather, but I am no better than Adam. So the, we don't what, blame what Adam. What does the original sin mean? Huh? The, the original sin. Then what is this concept? This is the original sin. Original sin that Adam, because of Adam, out of heaven. But you are no better than Adam. We follow. Okay. Yeah, we follow Adam steps in in being sinners. So uh, uh, the original sin is, doesn't mean we are blaming Adam for the, all the sin we have. We are blaming Adam for the first sin, and the rest of the sin is ours. And mm. it doesn't matter really who do the one, the, the first and the second. Sin is sin. You know? mm. If you do sin before, you know, like you are first and then I second. In, in the eye of God, both of you are sinners. It doesn't matter who did it first. Okay. Well, it's, uh, you definitely, uh, I'm, I'm happy I asked you those, quest those uh, questions, you know. Uh, yeah, it made me change my thought, my opinion on the... And I'll see, I have to think a bit more, but you know, so far it's changing my opinion. I used to think that, hey, Christianity likes to call uh, the life and uh, the world sinful and a bad place instead of accepting it uh, like it is and uh, so on and so forth. But you know, uh, my, my friend, the life, life is a bad place because we made it bad, not because life is bad. God, he did not create a bad place. God created heaven, you know. For us in this Christianity, heaven was on earth, not in heaven, not in the sky. So heaven is in, in the earth, is an earthly heaven. This one, the one given to Adam. Mm -hmm. So when God he even he did not create Satan, he created an angel. So God he wanted to have angels, and then say, uh, uh, angels chose to be a Satan. So the the purpose of a creation in a Christianity that all of us we will live in heaven, but because we are greedy, everyone worship himself. We end with many gods. And many moral, you know, in Islam, they claim Islam claim that it teaches the best of moral. But Islam teaches you can attack the neighbors and get the blonde girls, as Muhammad did. And this yeah, is moral, supposedly. Not... Yeah. And the Muhammad, Muhammad, he got. I don't know if you listened to the video two days ago. A Muslim he called me and he said uh, the reason all the women they want to sleep with Muhammad because he's famous. Yeah? Oh, you know, this is morality. Why you? Why your prophet first, made a made a verse? Chicken, huh? You know. Which came first, the egg or the chicken? Why do you think he became popular? You know. Yeah, he became popular because he's a criminal. So, you know that all all the all the women of the criminals they like to join the, the the criminal in the bed, and look at the excuse, and then and then he say, and oh the best scenario, the most the best answer will say to you because he's a prophet. Okay, because he's a prophet now he can have more women in bed. What what is the logic in that? Why? Why in Islam is uh, do do we have two version of Islam or one Islam? They say one Islam. So okay, how many wives Muhammad he can have? Unlimited. How many wives you can have? Four. So how come isn't, it, isn't he a Muslim? They say oh, no, because uh, he's a prophet. That's very convenient for Muhammad, don't you? Yeah. Don't you think? So, yeah. So my friend, if you have any question about Christianity, I will be happy to help you, and I invite you to accept the Messiah as your Lord and Savior, because trust me. All what people they can give you, you know, in this world, will not take you to any any place of rest. All of those things we mention, it is not going to bring rest. You will find that most people who they are disturbed in their life is those who don't follow, a, 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 let us say, a good belief. A, a belief can give bring them comfort, not a belief bring hate to their heart. So we Christians, when we pray, we pray to Muslims. Muslims they curse us, we pray for them. Uh, Hindus are upset from us, we pray for them. The Jewish are upset from us, we pray for them. The Lord himself in the Messiah in the cross, he says, Father, forgive them, they do not know what they are doing. So the Messiah, my friend, bring you comfort in your what life. I can, yeah, what I can see, for example, is when you look at Jesus and you compare Jesus to Muhammad, Jesus uh, didn't fight wars, he didn't have 11 wives, he didn't uh, do all of these uh, crazy things. So uh, I can give, I can say Christianity that you know Jesus is definitely a good guy, but Muhammad he is not a someone that has the morals. Yeah, but forget to... about Muhammad now. You know you are not a Muslim no more. You know the duct tape age is over. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I'm, not going, I'm not going to duct tape Jesus for you, right? Because Jesus, he do not need me to duct tape like Muhammad. So you could say have, that. <laughs> we, we have the Messiah. is an amazing person. Love your enemy. Bless those who curse you. Who can go that far? Love your enemy. 2,000 years ago. Today, who dare even to say this word? I mean, imagine you have a president in the United Nations saying, love your enemy. People will say, well, this guy is crazy. What are you talking about? Imagine... Uh, uh, Putin and uh, and uh, Joe Biden, you know, he might forget his name at that time. He, he, they go in a speech and they say, love your enemy. Okay, well, uh, uh, that will not work in this day. In, in, why they will not work? Because people, they are full of a greed. People seeking power. People, they want to earn more, make more, control more. So the evil inside us forbid us from following the Messiah. Because if we practice only one sentence of Christ, not the whole book, just one, love your enemy all the budget we have for military in the world can make this earth heaven that's trillions, a lot of money wasted on, of the, dollars. on the yeah. military that's true you know yeah trillions of not not billions trillions of dollars you know yeah, that's, is this is a spent that's around that. the world just to kill why because a human so, being yeah. is worth than animal you see even animals when they fight they fight for a reason human being they don't fight for any reason sometimes Yes, I mean, you, you wonder, you ask yourself, what even the reason for this war? Uh, hmm. Russia is so big, India is so big, Pakistan is so big. What do you want? What, what exactly you are looking for? Nobody, they cannot live without killing. So hatred is the supreme in this earth. Hatred is the master in this earth. This is why we as a Christian, we believe that the Messiah is going to come back and he's going to save this earth from our hatred. I see. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Well, it was a pleasure uh, talking to you, and uh, you know, I really Thank appreciate you, it. And uh, you know, don't be scared of criticizing uh, ideas and religions and this and that. I'm no the last one. one need, I'm the last one needed advice, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> All right. Thank you, my friend. God yeah. bless you. If you want any, any any help, you can call me. Uh, I appreciate it. But I, I invite uh, you, before you sleep today, my friend, think about it. No one can save you. And without the Messiah, you know, still we will never have comfort in this earth. You will go through many things in your life. You will you will, you will, will feel that uh, the life will direct you just in temptation, but there's no purpose. With the Messiah, you will have a purpose. And temptation will not die. Temptation will be with you. But temptation will be under control. So there's a huge difference between you control your temptation or temptation controlling you. A person who lives under the control of temptation will end wherever temptation takes him. It's, uh, it's, it's, I can tell you that, you know, uh, being uh, an atheist, it's, uh, and, you know, believing that there's no God, you know, it feels like uh, almost a bit lonely sometimes, you know. It's like it feels almost purposeless. I don't know if I have to get used to it, but... There's something to be said about that, I can well, say. I hope soon you will you will manage to think, rethink it again, and you will call me and uh, you tell me that you this, if you have a question I will answer you and I, I hope soon you will accept the Messiah as your Lord as Savior and I'm so happy for you anyway that you decide to leave Islam. But remember, for me as a Christian you are not saved yet because still you are just going with the current. Wherever the current take you, we will go. You know because. You now you are submissive to life, not to a purpose in your life. There is no purpose. You are just living, you know, enjoying things, food, sex, etc. But real purpose, you don't have it. And life without real purpose, it goes so fast and it dies so fast. And nobody will remember you after that. All right. Uh, I, I, I will think about it. a lot of uh, give you something to think about at least. So yeah, thank you. All right. Thank you, my friend, for calling. Take care. Well, I'm so happy for him. You know, you remember, he, he called me, I don't know uh, how, a while ago. Uh, I, I think I see here in YouTube, uh, sorry, in uh, Skype, uh, we spoke last time. I don't know, Skype, it shows last time in November 24. Really? Time don't go fast. Huh. Okay. November 24th all right yeah this is actually because I'm looking at the Skype here 
this is the first time he texted me it's uh, Wednesday November 24th at 2.21 and he is saying Salam CP I'm a Muslim I have this agreement with you can I ask you my question yeah so the duct tape conversation happened at that time uh, time go fast I'm very happy for him that he decided to leave to leave Islam uh, <clears throat> Yeah, we go back here. A Muslim Abdul, he's saying the following. How can you write that the moon split is nth scientific while Jesus turned water into a wine? I mean, this is really very, you're a genius, my friend. You know what? I don't think you're born after nine months. I think your mother she cooked you in the microwave look at the compare how you can uh, write that the moon split is unscientific first of all we don't say it is scientific or not who care if it's scientific or not the stupid Quran did not even say who split the moon secondly if the moon is split why is it split no more did Allah glue it again <laughs> Jesus made the water wine. It's a miracle. Okay, let us say there's a miracle in the Quran. Allah split the moon. But Allah did not say who split the moon. And he did not say if he glued the moon again. Did he glue it again? If the moon is split, should we should have two moons now. So do we have two moons? Split is not a crack. Split is a split. You know what the word split mean? So you Muslims, you have a funny, funny miracles. You know, there's a there's a there's a guy. His name uh, is Fifi. He said the body saw it because it was for a second. <whistles> That's deep. For a second, only for a second. Me for a second. Well, my friend, even if it's for a second, there's nobody was looking at the sky at the time. In Italy, in Persia, in China, nobody was looking. In, I mean, let us talk about those who they are living in the same, you know, uh, uh, like nighttime for them, not those who they have daytime, like in USA. So, those who they have nighttime, nobody noticed that the moon is split, and Allah He split the moon. What it says that Allah split the moon. Read the verse. And look at the translation here. It says, uh, the people of Mecca requested the prophet. Uh, S A W to show them a miracle. Okay, well, just to show you how stupid this miracle is. If Muhammad really have a miracle, so why the Quran keeps saying Muhammad never have a miracle? Do you see the stupidity? If Muhammad he had a miracle splitting the moon, this is a chapter thirteen, and it's mentioned twice in chapter thirteen, verse number seven. And chapter 13, by the way, is at the end of the Quran. Chapter 13 is at the end of the Quran. If we go, let us go a little bit, open Prophet Google. And we will look for Quran according to Revelation, Muslim website. According to Revelation. Yeah, because Muslims, they agree that the Muslim, they change the Revelation order. And the funny, they claim that the Quran never been changed. But all of us, we knew that the Muslim claimed that the first time Quran came to Muhammad is where the angel, he said to him, read. But that is at the end of the Quran now. You see, chapter 96, it was number one. And the Muslim, they say, we never changed the Quran. Brother, we never changed the Quran. Brother, like Turkey, you know. Brother, 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 never changed the Quran. Like, look at it. The chapter of read, Al-Alaq, huh? It is 96 today. It was number one in the Quran in time of Muhammad. So who is the one who changed it? They said to you, the prophet, he told us to put it in order. Show me the hadith. Go ahead. And if Muhammad is God, he told him, this is the Quran. Should Muhammad change it? <laughs> Did Allah make a mistake by making it number one? So let us go and, and, and look for chapter number 13, shall we? Okay. Let us look for 13. 
Oh boy. Look at this. Chapter 13. It is number 96 in the according to Revelation. So Muhammad is almost dead. And yet, Muhammad do not have any miracle. What about the chapter of the moon? The one where it says that the moon is split. Let us go back to the moon chapter. Shall we go to the moon chapter, brother? Okay, let us go to the moon chapter. What a bunch of kids. Huh? Let us close some pages, too many pages. So, chapter of the moon is in the Quran today, number 54. What, what, what? 54. All right. Let us go to the revelation and search for 54. Surprise, surprise. 54 is number 37. So, look what happened. The miracle of splitting the moon, as the Muslim they claim, happened. In the beginning of Muhammad life, after 37 chapters, yeah, I mean, you know, a few years after, as a prophet, then we have, we go all the way until Muhammad is almost dead. Number 96, we find the Quran saying, Muhammad never received revelation. Sorry, never received a miracle. Do you see it? Muhammad should say to them, don't you see the moon? I split the moon for you. So Muhammad now is almost dead. And he is, you know, he have no miracle. <laughs> he left as a dummy, never come back as a, you know. You know, when the Chinese say he left as a donkey, never come back as a horse. They were talking about Muhammad. Nobody else. Who is next? See, Muslim, this is why they don't dare to call me. Our friend here, the one who called me, because this is what happened when you call Christian Prince. Our friend, Muhammad, I'm not going to call him duct tape no more. I come with this name because I give up on him. I don't, I, I don't know for how long we spoke. Let me, let me look in Skype. For how long that was the conversation with him? I mean, the last time conversation. Uh, yeah, I don't have it doesn't show really for how long it should show. But anyway, uh, whatever I give him, he give me he, he put a duct tape, you know, maybe and maybe and maybe and maybe it doesn't mean that and maybe it's a you know, so I don't know one hour, 20 minutes. I'm, I'm not sure I don't, if I remember, I can remind me. I lost my voice shown him and he was trying his best to duct tape Muhammad this is why I said well you are you know what you are doing now you are just doing duct tape you call you call you call me and you are a Muslim there's one of two things will happen either you will leave Islam or the Muslims who listen to you will leave Islam try me right and if we say that Muhammad wasn't Abrahamic the Muslim they will say liar liar Muhammad you do not know what even Abraham mean he liar liar okay Muhammad was a pagan and the Arab were pagan like him liar uh, you know uh, let us respond to Christian Prince well he wasn't Abrahamic for sure and he's a scam I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that 
most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes in it. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified <laughs> and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. <laughs> all right, so we go back and listen what one of the Muslims, he's a smart Muslim, he put for us in the chat. Just to show you. Just to show you why is saying Islam is a stupid and it makes you stupid when you follow a stupid person. So this is a person, his name is Ibrahim. And Ibrahim, why you don't call him my friend? So let us see how smart you are. Look what he said. He's calling me Huthala, which means garbage. He said, Lakum deenakum waliya deen. Ibrahim, who is the stupid here? If you say you have your religion, I have mine. So why you're a stupid prophet keep calling us names? Why he keep calling us kuffar, najis, filthy, liars? Okay. As long as you have your religion, I have mine. So secondly, what is your religion? I challenge you to tell us what is your religion. Your religion is you go and you kill your neighbor because he's not a Muslim, and then Allah will make your penis endless, and you will have a lot of women, their legs up. This is a religion, Ibrahim. This is your religion. You go and you kill the one who they are not Muslims, and then Allah will give you a lot of women, and their legs is up. This is religion? Huh? Or maybe you mean that the religion is that there is a God, if we believe in him, this God, he will give me women with big boobs. Is that the religion? So when you say, we have our religion, you have, my, by the way, this chapter in the Quran is the most funny chapter. The chapter of Al-Kafirun is one of the most stupid chapter ever. Let me show you how stupid it is. Cry, 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 my friend. Cry. You cannot answer us. That's why you cry. Potato. Just to show you the chapter he is quoting to us from. This is this is a God talking. Look at this chapter. This way, this way he is quoting, uh, quoting for us. Say, O Muhammad, look here, by the way, all what the verse says, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ The translation or making all of this. All of this is this sentence? What happened? All of this in English is to translate three words. They are literally three words. So all of this to translate three words? That's deep. We change a stupid translation. This is Hilali and Khan. Let us go to Yusuf Ali. Other donkey. Look what happened. Man, I think the Clorex ate it. Don't, don't use the Clorex with the Quran. The goat ate it. Okay. Oh, you kuffar. Okay. Uh, reject faith translation. Kuffar reject faith. No, kuffar is not reject faith. Kuffar is the one who hide the truth. And then, or oppose it. I worship not what you worship. Like, what the heck? And then, no, you will worship what I worship. What? What? And then, I will not worship what you which were worshiping. What do you want to worship? Like, what? And then, no, I will worship what you want to worship. What do you want to worship? Like, what the heck? And then, uh, you have your religion. I have mine. What a donkey. And guess what happened? All Muhammad, he just said, nor you will worship what I worship. Do you know that all of them later became Muslims? Do you know that the one Muhammad was talking to, the tribes of Al Al Quraysh, they became all of the Muslims later? He just told them, none of you will worship my God. So the verse you are quoting for me, proving that Muhammad is a certified idiot. What is this guy, uh, Ibrahim? 
إبراهيم يا إبراهيم إنك لإنسان لئيم سأضع عليك اللعنة وأعجنها بالجبنة وأصنع منها قرآن عديم إبراهيم يا إبراهيم ما أدراك ما الشيطان الرجيم uh, We made Quran This is religion You know, if I change one word Instead of saying Al-Kafirun I worship not what you worship I will change I worship To I eat Okay Any Anytime you see the word worship Change it to the word I eat Just to show you how stupid this religion is so I will take worship here and I will use the word eat in the top of it. Kabich. Here we go. Now we have a new Quran. Let us type the word eat. Oh, we're typing in Arabic. Let us switch the, the color. We make it red because Ibrahim, he like red. This is what happened to him if he did not wash dishes at home. Okay. So I will change the word worship with eat. For every word, it says worship. And then you will see how stupid this book is. A brother, I eat not what you eat. Nor I will eat what you, what I eat. And I will not eat what which you have been eating. Nor will you eat which I ate. You have your food, I have mine. This is God talking. This is God. You know what? This is heavy. This is literally written by someone a supreme genius. I mean, take a lot of time. I eat not what you eat, and you will not eat what I eat, and I will not do eat what you eat because you will not eat what I eat. Because I will not eat you not what you eat, but you will never eat what to eat because you will not eat my food. I will never, never, never eat what I eat because you have your food. I have mine. Thank you. That's the. That is philosophy. That's where philosophy is coming from. Philosophy. This is not, this is philosophy of I worship not what you worship, and you will worship what not to worship, and I will worship what you worship, 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 worship. My friend, your God, Muhammad, was watching Star Wars, so he started with worship. This is the verse you are quoting for me, Ibrahim, call me so we can laugh. And by the way, as you see, all of those he said to them, you will not worship what I worship, neither you will worship what I worship. All of them, they became Muslim, which is this chapter proving Muhammad to be a false prophet. Because he confirmed that they will never worship what he worship. Do you see why I say stupid is amazing? No, Ibrahim is not missing. His wife, she, she forced him to go to the laundry room. She said to him, do you see, honey, what happened? Do you see, I told you, don't sit alone in front of the computer. Why you come to Christian Prince alone? You cannot. Uh, honey, I, you know, I, I just, I posted two words and he made a story of it. Because he's a Christian Prince, don't you know, don't do that. Actually, this is the reason you cannot have kids from me. Because simply, it's not functioning like your prophet. Hey, by the way, Muslims. How many how many descendants Muhammad you have? I look in YouTube, yes, millions, man. The king of Morocco claimed to be descended. The king of Jordan claimed to be descendants. Saddam Hussein claimed to be descendant. Al Qazafi claimed to be descendant. George Bush claimed to be descendant. I mean, everybody claimed to be descendant of Muhammad. But Muhammad, he cannot have sex. Not even in the time of Rex. And we have reference. Hmm. Why you say that Muhammad Mary is six years old while Mary she wasn't 12 years old? A proud Saudi, are you proud Saudi or proud an idiot? Hey, can you show me the reference that Mary she was six, uh, 12 years old? Secondly, Abdul, isn't your Quran say that Mary she was a virgin? Are you saying your Quran is lying? 
Because as you see, that Mary, she gave birth as a virgin, so there's no husband. Ah, look like your God. Allah is a stupid. He forgot that Mary, she have a husband. But you are smart and you're God. You got the point there. <laughs> hey, Saudi, uh, proud Saudi. I want to ask you, are you sure you are not Hindu? I know, it sounds like you are trying to make me say things to expose your prophet. It sounds fishy for me. Um... <clears throat> Do we have any Abdul? We have Ahmad here. Look, look how genius Ahmad is. Look, guys, the Muslims here in the chat, they are the one who can get you busted. Look at this. This is a thinker. Not thinker, the one you use for fishing. Thinker, thinker. You know, he think, he think. When, when Muhammad and he think, there's something horrible will happen. So you think all your sins are justified because Jesus died? How stupid! <laughs> Abdul, we don't believe in that. Who, who is the donkey? He said that to you. It is you, Muslims, who believe. If you touch the black stone, your son is just your sin is justified. <laughs> it's you who believe in that. Let us go to the black stone touching. Hey, uh, Abdul. Ahmad, did you when the last time you touched Blackstone? Be honest with me. And where you touch her, huh? Ahmad, where you touch the black stone? Because the black stone, as I know, it looked like a vagina. And I challenge you to call me to explain to me why it looked like a vagina. Eh, it's just a question. Explain. And now, if we go in the hadith, we will find your prophet saying, if you touch her, don't take me wrong, I'm talking about the black stone. It erase your sin. That's deep. It justify your sin, brother. Who is the one believing justifying sin? If you touch the black stone, it justify your sin. That's so deep. Look at this, brother Ahmad. Do you think I should go to the Kaaba and touch her? I mean, the black stone? Is that why you make her wear burqa? Here we go, I just showed you. Look, Ahmad, look, is, Ahmad is making challenge. I mean, that's it. When, when Muhammad made a challenge, that's it. You're in trouble, brother. Ahmed, do you like to call me and you can read for us, Ahmed? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead and show us where the black stone justifies sin. Hmm? I got you busted, Christian Prince. You cannot show us. Hey, Abdul, it's here. Are you satisfied or you are set and fied? Read it. You touch the black stone. It justify your sin. Your sin is whipped. That's deep. So Ahmad, me and you, brother, we are going to go to the Kaaba tomorrow. And we are going to touch her. You touch her first, and I touch her second. Or you know what? I will touch her first. Because what if the eraser is not working if you touch her after me, I want to be sure my sin is erased first. Are you there? Who want to go with me and touch her first? I mean, the black stone, which is in the shape of a vagina, alhamdulillah. Ahmed, is that your prophet saying so? Uh, now they will say to you, this hadith is daif. It's not daif. And even daif is accepted, by the way. There's two corners in the Kaaba. If you touch them, brother, it erase your sin. Not even just a fight, it erase them. It's gone. It's like a shampoo. Hmm. Do we have any smart Abdul here? You know what? I know I'm asking for much when I say smart Abduls. I take it back. That's it's like mission impossible. I mean, how in the world I say such a sentence? The Muslim they might even be offended by saying smart Abdul. Smart and smart and Abdul. 
And the guy was talking about us being stupid. Why? Because some he said that if Jesus died for me, justify my sin. Nowhere in Christianity it says that. You are a liar. This is new religion. And you know what? Sooner or later I will touch her. Just wait. I will convert to Islam just for two weeks to go and touch her and come back. And then I open my chat and I say I'm a, I'm a Christian again. What do you guys, what do you think? I make a video of Christian Prince going to the Kaaba and he is touching her. And she's wearing a skirt, black skirt. I will put my hand under the Kaaba skirt. That's deep. Hey, by the way, Muslims, why the Kaaba is wearing a skirt? What is the what is the reason? Who is behind this skirt thing? Is it true that the one, the first one who made the Kaaba wear a skirt was a pagan? And you Muslims are doing what the pagan does? A house of God wearing a skirt? Is there anything under the skirt? I'm just curious. Or only skirt. I mean, what house of worship wearing burqa? Why is that? I'm just wondering. Hmm. Look at them. And now after I hang up, they will say to you, this guy cannot refute this guy, and he cannot refute that guy, but none of your guys dare to call me. And the one who called me, who leave Islam. Here we go. Ask Mr. Muhammad, who used to be duct tape. He is not duct tape no more. Okay, we have a Muslim maybe trying to call. Let us see. <coughs> we will mute the speaker <coughs> until he answer. So we will not bother you with the sound. Answer, Abdul, answer. He's Hello? The son of the yeah, here we go. Are, he's playing the music for me. Rashid Muhammad playing playing uh, Arabi music. That's deep. That's really deep. <sighs> mean, you killed the show, brother. Are you going to dance for us too? I heard that your prophet used to do break a dance, and I heard that he is so pretty. Ah. It's very pretty, extremely pretty. All my life, I wanted to have a pretty prophet. And it's a dream to have finally a prophet who is so pretty. Uh, and by the way, the, the pretty prophet, when he don't, wanted to join the beauty queen competition, he decided to take a shower. I love how the Prophet of Allah he take a shower. I literally just love it. Look at this. Look at this. The Prophet performing wudu, which means washing himself, his body, in a well full of dead dogs and women blood from period and their rags and garbage thrown in it. Even the hadith says stinky stuff. That the whale is stinky. <sighs> so Muhammad now he jumped in the shower and he is so happy. He grabbed the shampoo. Oh, this is dead meat of a dog. Oh, this is the tail. Ah, oh, this is the testicle of the dog. Oh, this is his penis. Main. Okay. And now Muhammad is washing his head. La ilaha illallah is talking about jerking off. MashaAllah. You are really a very, 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 uh, uh, very good Muslim. Look at this. Let me show you. You see? Uh, here we go. Guys, this is a Muslim. La ilaha illallah. Why you don't call me and tell us about jerking off in the house of your prophet and the wife of your prophet was teaching the guy how to scratch the sperm from his pant. And if I am lying, everybody will laugh at me. Is that fair, guys? Is it true 
that there is a guy in the house of your prophet was jerking off literally, and then he have a sperm in his pant, and the wife of the prophet was teaching him how to scrap it using his nails. She said, this is how I do it with the prophet. Hmm. This is, thank you, you believe me. This is the beginning. You will get more. That's deep. He, la ilaha illallah. Uh, say hello to Allah and tell him that he sent an idiot, a coward like you, who don't dare to call me. He is a brave text terrorist. This is the beginning. If this is the beginning, what is the end? And secondly, Abdul, we don't worship a cross. It is you who kiss a black stone and believe that a black stone erase your sin. Mean the stone erase sin. How is that? Black stone kissers. It's a stone. You ask a Muhammadan in the best intelligence. And this is after I drink camera urine. Why you kiss the black stone? You remember the website we went to before? I don't know if anybody have the video. So we went to the Muslim website and we asked them. The website is like to convert people to Islam. So they have a chat. I asked them, hey, brother, I have a question. Why the prophet he kissed the black stone? He said, because it's holy. Uh, you know, he waited like for three minutes to answer me. He was thinking, maybe asking for help to answer. And then I said, why it's holy? Then he took his time again and he said, because uh, the prophet kissed it. <laughs> uh, <coughs> Why the black stone is holy Muslims? We Muslims are people who worship God. But the black stone, we kiss it. The black stone erase our sin. Hmm? Any Abdul? Any Muhammadan? Anyone? How brave Muhammad and R. Hmm. All right. Well, we are very satisfied today, actually. At least we have our friend Muhammad who debated me. I don't want to call it a debate. It was a duct tape, as usual, actually. We don't debate Muslims. Muslims never, never deep it. Muslims try to give excuse for the stupidity of their prophet. But as you see, uh, we are happy for Muhammad. I think, I think I hang up on him at that time, right? When I spoke to him, because I cannot take it no more. I said, okay, bye bye. Uh, this is what I remember. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but today I'm happy that Muhammad he left Islam and he is out of this garbage. Hmm. Any Muhammad? Any Muhammadan would like to call us? You know, when the Muslim they say 1.5 billion, by the way, now they are saying 1.6. Two weeks from now, they will say 2 billion. Just wait. Uh, but th those numbers are very funny because if there's 1.5 billion, why Islamic countries are not following Islam? You see, Islamic countries they claim that they are following Islamic law, but nobody follows Islamic law. The president of Algeria, he go to the mosque. He say, Prophet Muhammad is amazing. The king of Morocco, the king of Jordan, the I mean, all of them, the president of Egypt, you name it, the president, prime, minister, prime minister of Pakistan, the president of Pakistan. I mean, you name it. But nobody want to follow Islam. Music is haram. Everybody listen to music. Movies is haram. Everybody watch movies and not only movies, they watch special movies. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Nobody want to follow Islam. Because Islam, if, if you know, Islam, if it's not, Islam is not just a religion you believe. 
Islam is a government. So when the Muslim refuse to have an Islamic government, that's mean they are refusing to have Islam. As simple as that. So they have, right now we have zero Islamic state. The only Islamic state was exist is the state of ISIS. This is what it's called, Islamic state. And the Muslim themselves, they fought it because everybody hate Islam. Number one people who fought the Islamic state is those who don't want Islam. ISIS want to practice Islam. If you wear jeans, we break your legs. If you if you don't grow a beard, we we beat you. Uh, women they can sit on the chair. Why? Because the chair is a male. <laughs> the word kursi in Arabic is a male word. <laughs> women can't sit in the chair. Haram. You know what she said? She can sit in the lap of the imam. <laughs> The Muslim women, she cannot sit in the chair, but she can sit in the lap of ISIS member. If you are a Christian, your Christmas in five days, why you hate for others? My friend, who said I hate? Here we go, our friend here, Muhammad, he called us just uh, two weeks ago, and now he left Islam, and soon he, I hope he will become a Christian. So if we hate Muslims, then we will not say love them, and we will not stay here to help you after all what you do to us. I don't hate Muslims, I will never hate them. If I say that you are stupid, I don't hate you. You said something stupid, you are stupid, but I can do. But doesn't mean I hate you. I feel sorry for you. And as long as you are talking about hate, Mr. Ibrahim, this is your stupid Quran saying that Allah, he spread hatred in our heart until the day of judgment. So if you are against hate, you should be against the Quran. And you should blame the Quran because your stupid Quran is the one who is the vendor of hate? Here we go. This is the stupid Quran of Muhammad. Chapter 5, verse number 14 says, Those who call themselves Christians, we took a covenant from them, for we forgot good part of it. So, what we do? So, we string them with enmity and hatred. So, here we go. I have five days for Christmas, as you said, and Allah is to provide me with hatred, brother. Brother. Uh, Mauizi saying that Christmas is pagan. My friend, everything is pagan these days, including you. Look at you, you have a picture. Isn't it haram in Islam to have a picture? You are a pagan. They are so deep, but they cannot answer anything about the religion. Christmas is pagan. Why it's pagan? You see, do you know what, do you know even those people knows what pagan mean? Pagan, if you are worshiping something, is not alive. This is paganism. So, do we worship trees? No. Do we worship Santa Claus? No. So, how a Christmas is pagan when this is the day of a Christ? <laughs> Potato. Genius. Don't get married. Your wife, she will run away with the turtle. I say the turtle because she is... I mean, you trust the turtle to be at home, right? Trust me. If you are the husband, the turtle is good for her. She will live with the turtle. She will ride the turtle and she will never ride you. Take my word for granted. Just count to ten. Let us hear a prayer, CP. I honestly have no hate. Uh, Ibrahim, are you saying you are better than your God? <whistles> Guys, be my witness. Mr. Ibrahim, he's a good person. He's not like Allah. Be my witness. Ibrahim, honestly, he have no hate. Allah is full of hate and he is the hate vendor, Ibrahim. So what we will do now, Ibrahim? I need your help. How we can fight the hate of Allah in the Quran. Chapter 5, verse 14 in front of you. What kind of God he want hatred to be spread between the Christians? Hmm? According to the Quran, we are the victims of your God hatred. He is the one who made us people of hate. Do you have anything to say? Do you like to call me Mr. Ibrahim? We can start, we can have a new start, me and you. You sound like an intelligent man. I like intelligent people. By the way, I was number one in my classroom. I'm, I'm telling you, in mathematics, geography, everything. But I did not tell you that I was the only student, you know, by the way. Yeah. But this is remind me of the Quran. 
where Allah, he says he is the best of the creator, but creator, sorry. But supposedly he was the only one in the classroom. I mean, he is the only creator, isn't he? How he is the only creator and he says, I am the best of the creators. Is that a fraud? Allah gets certification he is the best of the creators in a school. There's no student in it except him. That's deep. Christmas is announced by the father of the church, not in the Bible. That's not true. Isn't it the Bible says that stars fell from heaven? Kings came to Jesus. So Christmas celebrated in that day, my friend. Don't make things up. It's in the Bible. Sky celebrated Jesus' birth. So who in the world want to say that Christmas is not in the Bible? Watch your mouth before you say things, my friend. Many Christians, they say things they don't know what they are saying. They don't think. So do we have any Abdul? Actually, yeah, I was the best to Karina. She is, you know, by the way, Karina, she was the principal of the school. I'm telling you, she was there. And she can witness for that day. You know, I was the best in the classroom. All right. Uh, and not only that, actually, <clears throat> uh, I, I don't talk about myself. You see, the Muslim, they say, they talk about Muhammad, how handsome he is, 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 you know. Uh, I've been offered a job like me and Prophet Muhammad in the same day, in the same day. Both of us, they offer us a job to do striptease and blind the club. Like there's women blind, they are blind. They, so we receive the same day invitation to work in the striptease club, me and Prophet Muhammad. Me, I was so shy, Prophet Muhammad, he accepted. And right now he's busy. <laughs> Unbelievable. So good to be true. It is true, brother. Allah is the best of the creators. That's deep. Hey, Muslims, was he the best of the creators? Was he or this is stupid? Was he? Hmm? <clears throat> A mousy, the birth of the day of the birth of the Christmas is not in the Bible. We don't care really for the day of the birth because let me tell you something. Even the day you know of your birth is not going to be celebrated again. Uh, just to give you an example, brother. Just example. If you are born, let us say, July 15. July 15, last year, maybe it was Tuesday, maybe. This year will be maybe uh, Monday. Is it the same day? No, because simply there's no perfect calendar. So you are silly. Secondly, as long as you are a person who cares very much for the date, how in the world you Muslims celebrate the birthday of Muhammad sometime in August, sometime in July, sometime in December, sometime in March, sometime in May, sometime in... I mean, Muslims, they care very much for the date, brother. Oh, brother. When the birthday of Muhammad, brother? Let us open Prophet Google and search for the calendar. Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> They care for the day, my friend. They care very much. Let us look. Let us take a look, brother. How come it's not the day, brother? The day is not mentioned, brother. Uh, okay. Let us see the Muslim calendar. Hold on. Okay. Uh, okay. This website here show us only a few years. Guys, the birthday of Muhammad, according to the Muslim website, is the following. In this year, it was in October 19. The year after 22 is going to be October 8. The year after is going to be September 27. The year after is going to be Monday, September 16. The year after will be September 5. The year after will be August 26. And it keep going. 
August, July, June, you name it. And the Muslims, they say, this is not, this is not true. Uh, this is not the true birth of Jesus. <laughs> Do you see why they don't dare to debate me? Because we can get them busted in the speed of light. They are no match. They are so slow with their brain, like a turtle. And they are in front of a Christian prince. So you can imagine how they can survive it. Christmas Day is not the exact Christmas of Jesus. Like supposedly you are celebrating the birthday of your prophet once in July, once in December, once in January, once in February. Brother, when the birthday of prophet like 10 years from now? That's deep. He prophet, last time we celebrate your birthday, it was so cold in December. And today it's July. How you move your birthday six months in a, you know? Uh, because I'm Prophet Muhammad, I'm very flexible. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, I love the Chinese when they say they lift as a donkey, never come back as a horse. I mean, it was a statement for truth. You cannot make a donkey a horse. That's impossible. Right? I mean, can't you come with something better? But anyway, let us talk about something smart. You know? Let us talk about something smart. I want to teach you something smart before I go. Because, you know, the smart is Muhammad. Look at this. Look at this. This is when Allah he was looking at how the creation. He is the best of the creators. We made the nutfa, the sperm, the semen, into a dead blood. Brother. Allah. First he made the semen. This is semen. Hmm? This is semen. Oh, hold on. We have to make the semen in different color. It doesn't work this way, CT. Okay, so this is brother. We can't make it white because the background is white. I mean, so this is semen, a drop of semen, a drop of semen, and then Allah will make the drop of semen to a drop of a blood, and it's dead blood. That's deep. That's deep, brother. Look at this genius. God's how me. That's, I never saw such a thing, man. This is so good. This is so good. I wanna, I wanna. You know what? I'm going to change my career. I wanted to work as a, as an engineer because I'm very good in engineering. Uh, the reason I say I'm very good in engineering, I am the one who did engine a year, a year ago. You know, so I was good in engineering. So you know, I decide to do now study engineering of uh, uh, biology. Let us do biology together. So according to the biology of a prophet Muhammad God, the sperm became a dead blood. That's deep. Look, hold on. This is not dead blood. This is red. Dead blood should be a little bit brown. Okay, now we will make it dead blood. Hold on. We will fix it. What the heck is that? Hold on. Dead blood, dead blood. Yeah. Okay, now dead blood. Yeah. So Allah... He will make the semen into dead blood. You know what? I know it. All of us will used to be dead blood one day. Just face it. I mean, this one doesn't look like a dead blood. Look like a poop. But anyway, just you get the point, right? You know, I mean, sometimes my skills is not with me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Do we have any Muslim can tell us how in the world the biology of your God work? This is God talking, and then the brother, the dead blood, the dead blood, the dead blood become a clot. That's deep. Look at the transformation. This is this is God book. This is God book, brother. This is knowledge, brother. It's like it's like light. It's like light. Who can uh, deny this uh, knowledge? Hmm.
and yeah, Abdul. And then he is the best of the creators. Look how he proved it too by signature. Allah said, and I am the best of the creator. That's it. If Allah said so, who cares? I mean, that's it. Hey, Allah, did you have a degree? Yes, I am the best of the creators. Where you get this degree? I, I am the one who signed it. <laughs> oh boy. Do we have any brave Muslim would like to call us? Muslim will say out of context. Everything is out of context. Even when your wife, she say, I love you, my friend. <laughs> Most likely she love your credit card. Out of context. I like this one. Out of, <laughs> out of context. I love it. Okay. Even this one is out of context. I mean, this one is out of context for what? He made the sperm into dead blood. Even this one is out of context. Like what the heck? Oh boy. <laughs> hey man, Christmas is coming and now your wives will love you very much for your credit card. So take my advice. Hide it. Okay? Hide it. Just kill it, you know? Let me tell you an advice. For me, I always forget my credit card wherever I go. I, I just forgot, you know, I forgot my credit card. I learned from Prophet Muhammad how to play those games. Do we have any Muslim? <clears throat> hmm? Hey guys, what are you buying for your wives for the holiday? I will tell you something will make your wife never ask you for a gift again in the Christmas. Print that page here, this verse and put it in the front of her face like put it in the box like you know like you frame it you frame it you know let, let, let me explain to you because most of you are naive in framing you know here we you know we are middle eastern we do a lot of framing brother we are the best framers ever okay so brother you take this hey what is this <clears throat> hey not phil not phil we, we don't want phil yeah, we take this brother and you frame it. <whistles> brother, your wife, and you say to her, this is my Christmas gift. I, pr I promised Allah to give you this gift for the, list, the rest of my life. Trust me, she will never ask you for a gift again. Take my advice for granted. Look at this. F don't forget to frame it, okay? And try to frame it more than once. Like, don't be cheap with the with the ink because it's one time deal, you know. Frame it, frame it. Like, look, look at this, and bring it to her. Says, look how beautiful this is. is. Look how it is, you know. And then every Christmas you give her this verse. Uh, I'm, I'm afraid if you listen to my advice, you will get divorced, by the way. <laughs> disclaimer, disclaimer. Oh, hold on. Did I say disclaimer? Did I say disclaimer? Do you know that Allah, he made a disclaimer in the Quran? Look at this. Look, let me show you. And as long as we're talking about divorce, why remember disclaimer now? Allah, he sent two angels. One, his name is Harut, and the other one, his name is Marut. What? Yes, brother, yes. Haruta wa maruta wa ma adraka ma harut. And those two angels, they open a school for Hori Butar. However, brother, this school is to teach magic. But guess what? Before they teach you magic, you have to sign a disclaimer. Yes, brother. And they will teach you how to make a wife and husband fight. If then after you sign the disclaimer, <laughs> they will teach you. <laughs> I want to know who is the genius who come behind those verses, Abdul. This is God talking. He opened a Harry Potter school and he make you sign a disclaimer before he teach you Harry Potter. <coughs> look at this, look at this. I'm getting dizzy here. Mm. So, but the evil ones is teaching magic. Ooh, 
Jagawoon, Jagawoon, magic for you. And such a thing come down in the Babylon to the angels her root and marut. Takatut, takatut, takatut. But neither of those taught anyone such a thing without saying, We are only a trial. Disclaimer, disclaimer. So don't do blasphemy. They learn from them the mean to sow discord between a man and the wife. That's deep. God who opened Harry Potter school and look how noble the purpose of this school to make the husband and the wife fight. <laughs> who opened the school? Allah. Muslims, Allah is fixing the society. He is so, so excited to help your marriage. He sent two angels downstairs to where in the Babylon Tower. Babylon, Babylon. And they open a school. Can you show us, please, the verse where it says a man are able to be right now? There's no verse, this is a hadith. Muhammad, he said, is a shtahal muslim ul walada fi jannah. This is deep. If Abdul, he wished to have a baby in heaven, he will carry it and he will deliver, deliver it in within an hour. <laughs> I would love to see Mimi Ajab have a baby in his belly <laughs> in within one hour. By the way, you have to take picture fast, you know, because after one hour he will deliver it. The question is driving me crazy about this. The Muslim will deliver the baby from where exactly? Muslims? Where? I mean, the baby will come from where? Like, what the heck? I hope it's not from your anus. That will hurt. Yeah, this is the microwave uh, story. Yeah, what happened, you know, one day, a Muslim, I was saying, give me three words, I will give you something about your prophet. You know, because the, this is why the Muslim was scared to talk to me, because anything they say, I will get them busted. So, so the guy, he like, he come with something impossible. He said, microwave. Okay, give me something about microwave. And he thought, if I say microwave, I mean, how in the world I can find such a thing for microwave? There's no way. There's no microwave in time of Muhammad. So I get in this one. <clears throat> Do we have any Abdul? Do we have any Muslim would like to call us? You are welcome. You call me names. It's okay. You know, I forgive you. Honestly, I, I have no hate for Muslims. We love them, we would like to help them. But Islam is a scam, as you see. What is this? What is this? The God of tits. Brothers and sisters. Oh, sorry, forget about sisters. If you believe in Allah, Allah will give you big tits to play with them that must be from god that only god words you know there is no way a human being can say such a thing this is must be godly teaching and you know for me personally i'm scared of those tits man I mean, if what if this woman she hit you with one of them? Did you watch this comedy movie, the women that like Al Qazafi, when the women she broke uh, like a board with her tits? Um, she is the bodyguard of Al Qazafi. Did you see the movie? What is what's called the dictator movie? The dictator, the bodyguard of Al Qazafi. She have big, 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 big tits. She hold her tits and she hit the board. And bish, she broke it. So imagine how big those those are. Way bigger, you know. Those are really big. So. And she hit you with them. I mean, that's it. Bye-bye. 
you made this woman angry, they will hit you with their tits because this is the only weapon they have. And this is not a concealed weapon, by the way. I mean, you cannot conceal it. Sorry. <laughs> Unbelievable. All my life, I'm dreaming to have a true God who promised me true, you know, things true, like you can hold in your hands. Yeah, I mean, big, but those even hands cannot fit with them. You know, they are so big, you know. Am I talking to myself? I did sound like it, you know. Yeah, I'm Prophet Muhammad. Oh, Jibreel is talking to me. Hold on. Jibreel, uh, Jibreel, you know, it's, by the way, the Hadith says that the, the Muslim woman in heaven, her ass will be one mile. And that will bring the question, how big her tits will be? And the Muslim, they will say, what kind of language you are talking about? Just your prophet said, here we go. This is my language. This is your prophet language. What kind of God he promised me boobs? What kind of a prophet he says your wife in heaven will be one mile, her ass? And by the way, why one mile? Why? What about a mile and half? Maybe? Or a mile and something, you know? I mean, all of them, they have exactly the same size. All of them, they will have one mile. How boring. All of them. <clears throat> mm. God will fill the heart of all those who follow Jesus with compassion. <whistles> That's deep. Uh, uh, my friend, hold on, uh, Muslim. Why you don't call me and I will let you read for me chapter 57. Is that fair, guys? I challenge you to call us and tell us about chapter 57. You see, this is your choice. What say you? Hmm? I want you to read for me chapter 57. I want to see how proud you are about 57. Are you proud? That is deep. Let us see chapter 57. Horrible, 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 stupid chapter. Allah is the one created the heaven and the earth in six days. And look at the translation, it says moreover. It doesn't say moreover. It says, and then he went up to heaven. Hey, Mr. 57. How Allah, he went to heaven up, he was on earth. You see, this is the beginning of the chapter. This is the one of the most comedy, stupid chapters in the Quran. But, uh, you know, you, you have a point only. You want us to read only uh, verse number 27. Let us go to 27 so we can laugh. Are you sure you wanted 27? You will, not, you will regret it. Hmm. Let us read. <clears throat> Brother. Let us read verse 26. Indeed, we send Noah and Abraham and place in their offspring the prophethood. Okay. Okay. And then after them, we send our messengers and we send Isa. Hey, Abdul, who is Isa? You said in your chat, Jesus. There's nowhere in the Quran the word Jesus is mentioned. Not the Hebrew name, not the Arabic name. We do not know who is Isa. Who is Isa? I challenge any Muslim to tell me where this name is coming from. I don't know. Secondly, the son of Maryam, and we gave him the Injil. Hoka Abdul. Allah, he gave Isa the Injil, but Injil is a Greek word. Was Isa sent to the Greek people? Any Abdul? Was Isa sent to the Greek people? Isn't it the Quran says we send to every nation from the nation in the tongue of the nation a book? So if Jesus was sent with a book, it's called Injil. That means Jesus was born between the Greek people. He was born maybe in Thessaloniki. Ah, Jesus in the Quran, he was a Greek person. Aha. Uh -huh. 
You know what? I'm so glad that the Quran did not choose the word calamari. But I will not be surprised if Muhammad heard the word calamari, he will put it there. Hey Muslim, what the word Injil mean? Not a single Muslim he knew, including their prophet. Because he's a thief. He heard the Christian saying Injil, he put Injil on the Quran. And Abdul, and then he continues saying, and we put in the heart of those who follow him mercy and compassion. Okay, hold on. So how we can compare between this one and this one, brother? Allah, he put compassion in the heart of those who follow Jesus. What is this then? Injil is an is an is a Greek word. It's not an Aramaic. Yes, is a Greek. It take you two seconds. Search it in Google. You will find the answer. Injil is a Greek. Really? Uh -huh. <laughs> like is this, like he's surprised? Like what? <laughs> you should be an actor. Any Abdul? Hmm. My friend, the one who put mercy in our heart is Jesus, is not your faithy God. Because if your God have a mercy, he put it in the Christian, he should put it in the Muslims. Not killing, chopping heads, chopping hands, riding your neighbors, suicide bombing. So if Allah is the one who put mercy in our heart, then how come he did not put mercy in your heart? Hmm. Okay, Mr. Ashok, you are welcome, my friend. Good to have you. Do we have any Abdul would like to care, you know, dare to call me? But it doesn't say who follow Jesus. Yeah, but this is true. The Quran is describing those who follow Jesus' heart. It's not Allah who put it in our heart. Those who follow Jesus are merciful. They are loving people. Isn't it Jesus says, love your enemy? If Jesus is the one who said, love your enemy, why we cannot find in the Quran anything except revenge? In the Quran, you cannot even love your own parents if they are not Muslims. So the thief Muhammad, he took the, the compassion we have, the mercy we have, a claim that Allah is the one who gave it to us. If Allah is the one who gave it to us, then he should give it to you. Was Muhammad merciful when he crucified people, cut their hands, when he put nails in their eyes? Let us say for the sake of argument, a person, he commit a crime. Why you put nails in his eyes? Why you do that? Why you torture? Let us say a person, he deserved to be executed. Why you torture? Where is the mercy? And this is in your strip of Quran. Where is the mercy of God? There's a story of a person he stole. He stole an egg or something like that. Muhammad, he told them, execute him right away. <laughs> they said, Prophet, he just stole, he did not kill. The punishment of stealing is cut his hand or his foot. He said, okay, cut his hand. So they cut his right hand. The guy, they brought him again a second time. They said, Prophet, he stole again. He said, okay, 
cut his hand cut his foot this time the opposite direction as the Quran is saying so now they cut his right hand and his left foot the guy he stole for the third time don't ask how this is what they say they brought him again so now they cut his left hand so now he have two hands is gone and one foot is gone he stole for the first time Muslims how somebody have no hands he can steal You see the merciful prophet? He keep cutting hands of the person until he have no hands and no feet. And the story does not make sense for a second because the person, he don't have hands anymore. How he can steal? How even can I walk? When we say Islam is just a stupid religion, we mean it. And you know, if a person he's you know he's a thief, and you cut his hand. And then you cut the other hand just for stealing egg by the way egg and more how come you did not cut the tongue of muhammad the penis of muhammad because every part of his body was a thief body part he kidnapped women from their husband he took their animals he took their land he took their jewelry he took their money and you go after a person he stole an egg Where is hate in the Quran? Show me what this guy talking about. So we just showed you, my friend Ibrahim. You were drunk or what? I showed you many times. Here, Here we go. Where is hate in the Quran? Show me. Where is hate in the Quran? Show me. Show me. This guy here for the last hour, and until now, I did not show him. Show me, show me. Can you show me? Where the hate in the Quran? Show me. Hmm. Uh, okay, uh, guys, all those who follow Jesus will be superior. Did you did you see a Muslim what your friend he said? All those who follow Jesus will be superior. Okay. But how you can follow Jesus if you're Muslim you claim that the book of Jesus is gone? How stupid is that? Secondly, The Quran confirm that those who follow Jesus they will be victorious until the day of judgment. That's mean Islam is not exist. Because according to you, there's not a single Christian right now. He's following Jesus. Because the Bible is corrupted according to those YouTubers. But look what the Quran says. Christianity is preserved until the day of judgment. From the time of Jesus until the coming back of Jesus, Christianity never changed. You see how your stupid Quran refute you? And not to forget to mention, verse number 54 before this verse, it says, وَمَكَرُوا وَمَكَرَ اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَكِرِينَ They deceived and Allah deceived, but Allah is the best of the deceivers. 
change the translator, you will find totally different translation. Because this is the book of falafel. They lie in translation. <laughs> so you see, the one who follow Jesus from the time of Jesus to the time, to the end of the time, they will be victorious. So how Christianity will be corrupted? Do you guys what this verse is saying? Do you see? This verse saying it clearly that the Christianity cannot be changed and it is preserved from the time of Jesus until the day of judgment. Because how they will follow Jesus from now until the time of judgment, they will be victorious. That means those Christians, there's a Christians in every time who follow only Jesus, not Muhammad. And not to forget to mention here, <clears throat> the Quran saying, just to show you the stupidity of this book, you see when the Muslims translate, they are, they are officially, they have no dignity. Look, Lo Jesus, I'm gathering thee. What do you mean gathering thee? Allah is gathering Jesus. Why? He was like a, 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 like a dry bread. He was pieces. Gathering thee? What gathering thee mean? In Arabic it says mutawafika. Mutawafika mean I'm going to cause your death. The false translation saying I'm gathering thee. Like what the heck? Change the translator. You will find different, totally different meaning, different words. Gathering thee. <laughs> Look, we just changed the translation. Look in here. Gathering thee is terminated by I terminate your life. <laughs> And look, guys, do you see what happened here in this verse? This verse destroys Islam again because Jesus should die before he will be taken up to heaven, not after. Do you see it? This is the Muslim translation, not my translation. I'm terminating your life and then raising you up to me. So Jesus, the Muslim, they claim that Jesus never died. Allah took him to heaven and he was still alive since then. The Quran say different. Stupid Muhammad. That's why we say he left as a donkey, never come back as a horse. Any Abdul? You are an atheist. A Merry Christmas, my friend. I'm always very friendly to atheists. By the way, once I debate an atheist, I lost a debate. I don't know if I told you that. You know, he, he tricked me, actually. He said to me, Christian Prince, I was, was we're debating about that the uh, origin of a human being is a monkey, you know. And by the way, you know, Middle East, we are we're very hairy, you know. I mean, they, they got a point there. Uh, <clears throat> like once they kicked me out from the swimming pool because they thought I'm wearing a coat or something. They don't know that this is our hair. Hello. Anyway, so the atheist, he tricked me. And he said to me, Christian Prince, he want to prove to me that we are originally, we are monkeys. So he said, Christian Prince, do you like banana? You know, I was not thinking about it. You know, I said, yeah. I said, see, I get you busted. Now we prove that the origin of a human being is a monkey. So I like atheists, or to be honest with you. Welcome, my atheist friend. Merry Christmas. But don't ask me the same question about banana, please. It brings a bad memory about this atheist who won the debate by asking me, do you like banana? I will never say again, live on air, I like banana. Uh, yeah, the USA passed Islamic blasphemy law, bill, not blasphemy, bill, it's Islamophobia bill, Islamophobia. Islamophobia, but international, I don't know what does that mean. Eh, stupid Democrat. This is why if you are a Christian, you should not ever vote for Democrat. This is a party from hell, literally. No matter what they do, whatever they touch, they turn into dust. Any of you doing shopping for food these days? Look what Joe Biden, he did to us. So nice, amazing president. Not like Trump, the price of gas is twice more. 
the price of food is six times more you know the 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 inflation is 21 percent imagine if you have one hundred thousand dollars in the bank you lost twenty one thousand dollar a christian who votes for democrat he is no christian i say that to you loud and clear because you are voting for a party which is killing babies voting for party is antichrist with no question uh, anyway not our topic yeah you can't be a christian and you vote for democrat you know if you claim to be a christian and you vote democrat you are lying to yourself how you vote for people who vote for the abortion? I mean, everything they stand for is against Christianity. Everything. They support Islam. They support Muhammad. They just made a law to encounter Islamophobia international. They want to protect Islam. This is the Democrat. International. What does that mean? Hmm. No, actually, I lost the debate many times, you know, like once I was debating myself. That was very hard. And then, like I said to myself, like I asked myself a very hard question, you know, and the question was, who is the father of Muhammad? You know, so I felt like there's birds around my head, you know, first, like, and after like birds, they went like 27 hours. You know, because at that at that time the the day was twenty seven hours, not like now. Now you know after tax, you know, to twenty four. Thanks to Biden. So anyway, the bird they were going around my head, and like I got dizzy and I faint. You know, so I lost. Like I could not answer the question, who is the father of Muhammad? Because he was born four years after his father' death. I want any Muslim to tell me until now. I'm trying to find out how in the world this guy was born four years after his father' death. That's a miracle, you know. That's why the Muslims, if you go to their website, they will say it will say to you that a woman she can carry a child for unlimited time. Now, depend on the sect, you know. <clears throat> but they start with two years, and then three years, four years, five years, six years. Look at this, uh, you know, you don't speak Arabic, so I'm going to use Google Translation. This is an official Islamic website. This is not, you know, this is not a joke. This is official. So the question here, how long a woman she can be uh, waiting for her child? Translate to English. <clears throat> how long, how long she can stay like this? How long? L listen to the answer. Assalamu alaikum, alhamdulillah, bismillah, alhamdulillah, la, za, da, za, da. okay? Now it says here, uh, the maximum period of emergency was well, one year, which is a view of Muhammad ibn Hakam, but this one is no pun. Two years in the Hanafi, those are the, the sect, Islamic sect, two years for the Hanafi. Three years of Abu Layth ibn Sa'd, but this one is no one, no problem. We focus in the sect. Hanafi is a big sect. The Muslim sect is four. This is one of them. Then Hanbali, Shafi'i and Hanbali, and the most popular view, they believe that it can be up to four years. And then the list continue. And according to Imam Malik, it can be five years. Mean. And then according to Al-Zuhri and Malik, six years. We are getting deep now. And then according to the authority of etc., etc., it is 70 years. <laughs> and according to the rest of the scholars, there's no limit. <laughs> oh boy, that's deep. Did you see one Muslim making a video about this page saying you are a liar? It doesn't say that CP. They don't. 
this is their religion and here we go this is the link I don't know if it's go through does it go through was I able to post the link the link did you guys see the link I posted about the website I don't know if you saw it because sometimes YouTube don't let it go if it's too long yeah imagine you divorce your wife 20 years ago and then she called you she say honey come to the hospital and pay for the bill I just gave birth to you and a child for you I said like what what did uh, I divorced you 20 years ago I said honey it's a Sharia law brother <laughs> there's a woman I think it was in Sudan when they were practicing the Sharia law in the time of the pre previous perverted president uh, so she gave birth a year and a half after her uh, her husband passed away so people accuse her of fornication and this is supposedly a punishment uh, a, a punished uh, with the uh, with death punishment or at least because now she is not married uh, to be whipped 100 times the lawyer he told the court but don't you know that a woman she can have a child even a few years after her husband passed away so the court have to let her go <laughs> <laughs> oh boy yeah you know what maybe maybe the women they they they, they hide you the sperm there I think they have shelves inside them like women they when they marry you you know they think about the future okay now sooner or later he will divorce me especially when his credit card is empty I will divorce him you know so what I will do now so what she would do when you sleep with the wife she hide your sperm inside her they have like little holes there and there you know shelves you know like secret place dark places she put it there in a cold place it's cold it's dark inside you know the cold very cold so she put it there and she put ice this is why you see women they, they keep asking i want to eat ice cream i want to eat ice cream for you you think they are eating ice cream because they like it no it's not the reason they want ice cream to ice the sperm from you so they can save it for 20 years after and yeah, but this way, this is a true story. So, uh, so you know, do you sleep with your wife? Then she asks you to buy ice cream. She eat ice cream, and then she ice it. You know, like it's cased. You know, like inside the ice cream, and the sperm will stay healthy because it's ice cream. Especially the chocolate to that. You know, <laughs> you know. I have my friend, like you know, uh, like I have two cousins actually. One of them was like his his skin is darker, and the other one he is his his white. I said, why? He said, because my mother, she was eating chocolate uh, after, as you know, center course with my father. And she was uh, eating uh, just ice cream without chocolate. So, you know, this is the scientific explanation for color too, you know. So, uh, and by the way, the prophet, he explained uh, color. Do you know? <laughs> Islam is amazing, my friend. That's amazing. Explain color, explain why, everything, everything. Oh, oh boy this is why if your wife she asks you for ice cream never I buy ice cream especially after a sexual intercourse it's fishy I'm telling you yeah they eat ice cream to preserve the sperm so they can ice it and you know for later oh. do we have any Abdul I'm not giving them the idea. They have it already. Don't you see their website says there is no limit? <laughs> what idea? You know? <laughs> what what idea? Actually, if you if you read their books, you will die laughing at the stupidity. As an example, one or some of the interpretation of the Quran, they say the reason that Mary, how Mary she gave birth to Jesus. How Mary she gave birth to Jesus. They say that Allah He put inside her when He created her. When the angel he was there he put semen so when Allah he breathed into her he activated the semen that's deep who can fight that nobody hmm.
Do we have any Muslim would like to call me? Hey Christian, do you notice that they don't dare to call me? Do you notice? Do you see how amazing the knowledge is? When you have knowledge, you smash the skull. They don't dare even to talk to you. And the one who dare, he will leave Islam. Like what happened with Muhammad. It took him how long? He called me last time, November 24th, as it shows in uh, Skype. And then today he called me to tell me that he left Islam. Isn't it, this is beautiful? The one who call, he will leave it. And those who claim they can refute me, lie number one, lie number two, lie number seven, lie number 1200, yet they don't dare to call me once to tell me one lie. Just one. Hmm. Any Abdul? But you know, at the end of the day, Muslims call us or not, I'm happy to see Christians learning a lot. We, you know, <coughs> I, I'm not exaggerating, I say, uh, this is the best school to teach Christians how to get Islam busted. Not how to refute only, how to get Islam busted. In every live season we do, we do nothing but we bust their lies with no mercy. And the same lies they bring to me, they will bring to you. Right? So, uh, you know, like, in, like when I started do, doing what I'm doing, there was very little knowledge about this garbage, which is called Islam. But now, thank God, we were able to spread a lot of, a, a, you know, I mean, my books translated almost to every language in the world. You know, we have few languages left, major languages. We have my books in Indonesian, Russian, uh, Malaysia, uh, Albanian, Croatian, German, French, English. Uh, I mean, you name it. You know, this, what, I don't know what, what is left. And we have a, a, the book in Persian. Uh, soon I will publish too. Uh, which means even Persian people, Afghani people, they can read my books. And this one, will give it, I will give it for free too. So, uh, what was before is not exist no more. My books alone is enough to destroy any claim about this garbage. It's called Islam. But in the same time, what we did here by doing this live broadcast, we teach you the skills how to corner liars. Because remember, when you debate Muhammadan, you are not debating them. There's no debate in the debate. It's like chasing a professional liar. You see, normally, when you debate somebody about his belief, he will tell you his belief. That will be easy. I tell you my belief, you tell me your belief. But Muslims don't do that. Muslims, they deny their belief in order to make a point. And one of the biggest proof, you know, remember when Mimi, he was debating with this David Wood, you know, uh, whatever he says to him, he denied. it. He just denied. it. He doesn't say it, you know, he denied it. And David, because he don't have the skills to corner him, uh, there was no debate. It was a mockery. So you need to remember that when you debate with them, you are not debating. You are chasing a liar. And the skills of debating a Muslim is not the skills of debating as much. It is the skills how to get him busted with his lies. There's no debate. Debate can happen only between two uh, decent people who say they believe. As simple as that. But Muslims, they deny everything in their books. When the Quran says the sun set in murky water, the Muslim says, no, 
it doesn't say that this is how he saw it but the Quran never say that the Quran did not say it appeared to him can't Allah add the word it appeared to him and you know what how stupid it is to even to say that word so in order to protect their cult they have to lie And today we have Christians from around the world, they are very well trained to refute this garbage, Muhammad. Now for sure not everybody has the skills of debating, because debate is not, is not something just by having knowledge you can do it, you know. You have to be a very fast thinking person, and you have to have a very sharp memory and sharp, uh, let us say, you have to connect the dots so fast, because the guy just talking to you, this is life. And we do not know even the topic, you see, that's why Usually people, when they want to say a debate, what they do, they say, we will debate about this topic and this topic only, right? So both of them, they go and print like a thousand lines from the internet, put it in the front of them in the computer, and this is a debate. This is not a debate. Debate is you don't know what you will tell me, and I do not know what, you don't know what I will tell you. That is really a debate between people who have knowledge. People who ask for a topic in advance of a month, Anyone can go print from the internet a thousand question, a thousand answer, and he go for such a debate, right? But a true debate is the one, call me, don't tell me the question. I mean, have you ever heard you go to an exam and the teacher, he tell you that the questions and the answers before you go? So this is what they do when they say, we are going to choose a topic. A true debate should not have a topic. The topic is Islam. That's it. It's not jihad, it's not, it's a topic is Islam. You don't know what you will say to me, I do not know what you will say to me. Right? <clears throat> do we have any Abdul? And never accept to have moderator between you and the Muslim. Because why you need a moderator? Moderator is just a joke. Moderator his job is not needed why because if a muslim he cannot debate me without moderator it's mean he needs protection from what talk i talk you know scream shout no problem prove me wrong what moderator so this five time for you five minute for you five minute is useless too because nobody in, in like corner the other person with something he said You sure the 20 minutes for this guy and this guy now he go he he read 20 minutes of printed papers he saved for us from the internet now the other guy he's not even listening to him he was ready to read the paper he printed the same as the other guy regardless if he's a christian or, or a muslim <clears throat> who is a muslim he dare to call me right now mayday mayday who is a muslim who dare to call me Bring it on. I don't know what you will say to me. Anyone? We do not need a moderator to favor any corner. You know, the moderator, there is no need for it. You know, I will give you an example. Like when David Wood, he brought a guy, his name is Sheikh Uthman. Sheikh Uthman, don't forget his name. But not, not Uthman, the, the, the fat boy, other one. And then uh, supposedly he would debate with Sam Shamu. What David would he do? He gave the microphone for this guy, 20 minutes, uh, 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 15 minutes for you, right? The guy, he asked a thousand questions before the debate started. And, and the topic of the debate is not even there. So here you see a weak moderator. He didn't say to him, stop, this is not even the topic. I mean, how, why you agree about a topic? And then suddenly there's no topic. So. They are not fit, they don't know how to debate, they don't know how to make a debate, they don't know how to moderate a debate, and even some of them, they just want to bring a guest just to keep their channel busy. It doesn't matter what happened there. And then 15, 20 minutes for this guy, he asked, he make a million accusation for the Bible, and now they give the mic to Sam Shamoon. So now Sam Shamoon, Everything was in head, his head is gone because now he have to answer all those 20,000 accusations. What is the, it doesn't work this way. Just make one claim, give the mic to the other person, let him refute it, get you busted. 
the Muslim guy was reading the internet article David Wood is a good moderator is the worst moderator he always side with the Muslims he let the Muslim get away with all the lies he say and the debate end with no 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 point David Wood only is good in making short videos he is horrible in debate he is horrible as a moderator and this is the only thing he can do really short videos he can make a very nice short videos debate no I cannot make a short video he can you know for me short video is like an hour or so you know <clears throat> and the reason I cannot make a short video because uh, uh, or if I start talking about a topic, I have to cover it with all, uh, let us say, reference which will cover every possible question later. So I don't leave you with the questions later to think about it. I just give you all the answers. This is why you see them lining up to debate David Wood, but nobody lining up here. Where are they? Where are they those who want to debate David Wood? How come? When Mimi Hijab, he told them he wanted to, uh, they asked, they said, who you want me to debate from those? And he put my name there. They said, a Christian prince, he make a lot of Muslim leaders now. The coward, what he did? He played short video, he hung up on me. He will never dare to debate me. They are so much intimidated. And they knew if, if a debate, real debate happen, it's going to be really bad. If it was David Wood, we will give him five minutes for you, five minutes for me, you know, the normal thing. But because it's Christian Prince, we cannot let him talk five minutes. We have to make a 30 second maximum. Hang up on him. <laughs> uh, <coughs> uh, <coughs> yeah, there's nothing. It's called halal food. Uh, halal food is a, is a lie. It's not exist because the, the, the food of the Christians and the Jews even even pork is is not forbidden but as long the food of the christians and the jews is is uh uh is lawful for muslims then the halal food is a is a lie you see even the quran says if you are hungry you can eat even pork Isn't it Muhammad he ate from the dish or the, the food that Jewish women she cooked and she put poison for him, right? Do we have any Muhammadan? It's not about debate correctly. Uh, a Muslim, he cannot debate nothing wrong. It's called correctly and not correctly. The Muslims, they have their own logic. You know, when Mimi Hijab was talking to this guy, Borat, he said to him, the Quran says, uh, uh, if this book is other than a, a God, you will have a contradiction, right? Then Borat, he said to him, well, I have a phone book, I have no contradiction, but it's not made by God, right? So, uh, there is a there is a line of stupidity they are stuck with it and they want somebody they need somebody to put them in their place with their stupidity not somebody give them five minutes of talk and when you take your microphone you say nothing so look what happened this guy they, they brought him to supposedly to fight Christianity they are hoping that he will help them so uh, uh, the Quran says if this book is made by other than Allah then you will have a contradiction very fast, easy answer. Found in it many contradictions. If a book is, if a book in it many contradictions. This book was from other than God. They would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that see, very easy. The problem is 
that many of those who they are Christian, they are not qualified to debate. Debate is not just a person who learns some stuff and he want to talk about it. You have to be a fast thinker. This guy who looked like an idiot, you know, Borat, he got him busted in a second. Did not take him to, not even him, you know, and very convincing. If a book have a contradiction or not, doesn't make it from God. I, I can write a book, I have no contradiction. Does that mean I'm God? That's very silly, right? So here you will see this atheist, he put this coward in his place in a very short sentence. Right? The problem with the Christians, they don't know how to answer the Muslim from what he just said. You know what I mean? What Christians they do, they don't listen to the Muslim what he is saying. So they start thinking about answering the question without using what he just said. You need to use what he just said. And this is what this guy, he just did. He used what he said. If a book have no contradiction, it's from God. He said to him, I have a phone book. Is it from God? Have no contradiction. So you need to learn always that when you are debating, listen carefully what the Abdul is saying. Just listen. Use their logic against them. Do you see in the movie like when uh, when those people they don't have more arrows, so they put uh, like uh, sh you know sh uh, shelters etc. So the enemy start throwing arrows like crazy, and then when they stop, they collect the arrows and they use them to fight back. This is what you need to do. Listen to their stupidity, you know, because when they say to you things against Christianity, they are being stupid. Literally. Any accusation against Christianity is that the accusation itself can be your best weapon. <clears throat> and it's what we do every day. Every time a Muslim, he says something in the chat because they are not calling, I put it in the screen, right? And suddenly what was accusation became a joke against Islam, right? How we do that? You remember? We are refreshing your memory. It is their accusation what help us to make Muslims leave Islam. What the Christians they do, they don't listen to the Muslim accusation. And they start finding their own reasoning. It doesn't work. Use their reasoning. When a Muslim he says to me, if Jesus is son of God, if Jesus is son of God, then his father should save him. I'm listening. Listen carefully. He said, if Jesus is the son of God, then shouldn't his father, God, save him? So I was sitting and those two Muslim Egyptian, one of them, he asked the other guy, told him, don't go there because he knew what would happen. He spoke to me before about religion and he knew he's no match. But the other one is younger. He insists. He said, no, I said to him, it's okay. It's okay. Let him ask. So he said, if Jesus is the son of God, shouldn't his father save him? I said, that's wonderful. So if Jesus is the son of God, his father should save him. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? That's mean that Jesus must be son of God in Islam because his father saved him. Do you see what I meant when I said use their logic? What was his challenges? If Jesus is son of God, his father should save him. I said, wonderful. That means Jesus in Islam must be son of God. You should see his face. You should see what happened to him. The other guy, he said to him, I told you, don't go there. Here we go, answer him now. Both of them are Muslims. The other guy, he said to him, okay, go, cool. answer it. Ah, here we go. So you need to listen carefully what the Abdul is saying. And the Abdul always says stupid things. They never say something smart. Never, never. Because they have a stupid God. But because you are not listening 
and not, you are not using the gift of God which he gave you. And you are not sure, some of them, they don't have really true faith. You know, they are not sure of what they are talking about. So use their logic. Who is a Muslim? He want to call me. Let us give it a try. <laughs> Who want to try? This is why we have a dry weather here. You know, no Muslim is calling. <laughs> if I am an, if I am like an, a person born in America, you know, blue eyes, green eyes, blonde, or a female, oh boy, you know, the Muslim will be lined up to call. But with a Christian prince, you have to keep begging, like, who wanna call me? Any Muslim? Any Muslim? Any Muhammadan? Anyone? If David would open his Skype, says, who wanna call me? Uh, tens of thousands of Muslims will call him. I assure you. Usually the only one who call is the one who will lose nothing of their career, which means they don't have a career based on Islam. Those who have a career in Islam, they, they will lose everything if they call. That's why all of them, they say, we, we are willing to debate him. I'm willing to fly to America if he, the coward, debate me face to face, face to face. Face to face. Ah, you know, this guy, ultimate part, he is just, a, you know, you see, when you are nobody, you can say whatever you want, right? That's why they call those people. But uh, a person who is, uh, he have a career, he would never dare to do so because he will, he will lose it. And now after we finish, you will see all Muslims, they will say is lying. And they will pause for your link saying, this guy, he refuted him. Listen to this guy. Who is going to listen to this guy? But we stay here. Those who will refute me, they don't dare to call. And I will call them in their life. Anyone? Hmm? Do we have anyone? Any one, any two, any half? <clears throat> no, you know, because they knew that uh, I, I am not a person who go, uh, I am, you know, I, I, I'm not seeking my own fame. Some people, they like to be famous and to be known wherever they go, and, you know. For me, I don't care. This is the last thing I'm worried about. There's, there's people actually, they, if, if, like they, they make uh, rumors about themselves just because want, they want people to talk about them, you know? Talking about them, make, even, even make them money. There's a woman, she used to be an actor, and she is now 70-something. So what she did, she posted her pictures in the bathroom naked. Why she did that? Because nobody's talking about her no more. But now she became a joke of everybody. You know, it's what you want. Yes, it's okay. She want to be a star again. So some people they are uh, obsessed with being seeking attention, have light on them. For me, I don't really care for those things. I'm here to serve my Lord, not to serve myself. And you know, like uh, uh, if we talk about a donation, uh, I I receive in the last forty eight hours. Uh, there's one new person he donated uh, five dollars which is strange I mean how in the world this happened <laughs> no actually hold on there's not only one there's other one I just remember there's another one but sometimes you, you look at the uh, you look at the uh, how people they support you too you will notice that really people only what they care is just to come here laugh at Muhammad and his God and etc and after that, there's nobody care. There's only a few. There's a person actually. He sent he sent a donation. He said uh, he sent me an email. He said I I understand if you don't uh, uh, answer me due to my little number. So I said to him, Who told you that I answer only those who donate little uh, big number? 
doesn't matter actually most of people who email me in patreon they have zero donation literally zero uh, and we keep asking people not to email by the way because mostly the emails are not really important here we go I stay with you for many hours ask me and when you ask me in public everybody will get the benefit of the answer <clears throat> Anyway, we are, you know, we are grateful for all those who care, but they are very few. That is reality. But there is nothing new. Even the Messiah himself, he have 12 disciples, not 1200. Right? Well, this guy is mentally ill, this uh, ultimate. You know, he, he don't uh, he don't want to accept the hadith. He don't accept the interpretation. But you ask him for the meaning of the Quran, he give interpretation. Uh, so why don't accept interpretation? He says to you because it's made by a human. Aren't you a human too? So he's mentally ill, you know. It's just uh, I feel sorry for him. You see, it's a good sign when a Muslim he refuse the statements and the words of his prophet. That's mean he's ashamed of it. That is the first step to leave his cult. So first, start with denial of the hadith, which is Muhammad's speech. Then denial of the interpretation, which is the campaign of Muhammad interpretation, or even Muhammad interpretation. Then you have to come with your own fabrication of understanding the Quran when you don't even speak the language. So if you go in the Quran and you see the Muslim, they say that the sun, uh, the, the sun did not sit in the murky water. The Quran did not say that. The Quran says it appeared to the Quran. But we go and read the Quran, all translation in Arabic is in front of us. Nowhere the word it appeared to be. He says he found it. He found it. And the word found or find is about reporting facts, not about reporting something did not happen. Right? There's a huge difference between he found it and he thought. He found it. It says he found it. So what they do now, they have to add their own words to this verse to fix it. We show them that their prophet explained the verse. Their prophet himself, he said, well, the sun set in murky water. They say we don't accept this hadith. So simply, uh, here there is no point of debate about it because obviously this is what their prophet said. I mean, why Muslim they want to write this in their books if it's a lie? <clears throat> Do we have any Abdul? Any Muslim? Uh, the one who's saying Amina was a whore raped by Muhammad by Satan. This is not right, my friend, to say. Why do you want to say that? Uh, you know, she had sex with any man. Who care? But raped by Satan, what does that mean? Don't go there. Any Muhammadan? Anyone? Hmm. Actually, when the Muslim they say to you, when a Muslim he says to you the hadith is rejected or not accepted, tell him that's mean your books is full of lies. And that's mean that your Muslims are not trustworthy. Because the one who write lies about his prophet, he write lies about everybody. Any Muhammadan? Last call before we go. Now, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Ibrahim saying, you are an enter entertainer. Uh, my friend, the best entertainer, Ibrahim, is your prophet. When your prophet, he say, 
he ordered his wives to cover themselves because a blind man is coming. That is entertaining. That is like, like uh, uh, you know, the best comedy. Have you ever heard of somebody order his wife to cover themselves because a blind man is coming inside? How stupid is that? Right? That is serious and stupid. Imagine I have a friend, he is, a, he is a blind, and I say to my wife, cover yourself. The guy is blind. Literally blind. It's not like I have a weak vision. The guy is born blind. And then the wives, they say to him, well, but isn't it him blind? So Muhammad, because he's an idiot, he didn't want to say, oh, sorry, I, I made a mistake. So I forgot. You know, just say I forgot, sorry, you know, so what a big deal. But because he's an, an, an arrogant, he said, okay, he's blind. Are you blind too? Isn't it clear that Muhammad is an idiot? Muhammad molested animals. Well, there is, do you know guy, the guy, his name is uh, Monkey Box, uh, Ahmad Nader. This guy, he once, he wanted to, you know, debate me, supposedly. It was fun in those old days. And, uh, you know, and uh, uh, Ahmad Nader, he says, so what if the prophet, he had sex with the goat? Isn't it better than the, the Bible says, smash the head of the baby? <laughs> this guy, he had no problem. He's a prophet, have sex with the goat. <laughs> <laughs> anyway we better go it's already more than three hours and uh, you see um, I will try to make my videos way more shorter because I notice if I make it long or I make it short still it is the same and uh, uh, you know I know that YouTube temper with the number because it doesn't make sense the same video I make will have 20,000 in my channel and then the same video in different channel have 80,000 I mean doesn't make sense right it doesn't make sense that a video I make it make 50,000 and then the same video in different channel make a million view it doesn't make sense so obviously YouTube is playing games dirty games with me and that is not a new they always do and this is why we cannot keep uh, we cannot keep our videos in our channel, right? I mean, everybody have his videos. All the Muslims they have their videos for, since ten years ago. YouTube never take one video down for them. Those who attack Islam, YouTube, take their videos, especially me. I cannot even have. I mean, after I have thousands of videos I made. If you go in my channel, how many I have? Ten? I'm not sure how many. And I have to delete them very soon. Right? This is telling you how much the devil is fighting us. That I am the one who, imagine once I receive a message from YouTube, and like, you know, at that time my videos was monetized. And they said, you are using uh, the videos of somebody else. At that time I wasn't even playing any videos of anyone. Like not uh, Zachary Naik, I was very careful. Uh, it's me, I'm a Christian friend. <laughs> They are making any excuse to to take away uh, the donation. So they thought, if we take the donation away from him, he will not come online. He will stop coming. But that will not change really anything. What make me come online when I you know I see there's need for me to be here, I will be here. If I see okay, we have uh, right now actually I have tens of thousands of videos. Even if I disappear totally, um, um you know. What I can do more? I will go and work more in my uh, Quran translation, you know, finish it so we can have it translated to many languages too. Uh, but obviously, YouTube is having a war on us, and atheists, liberals, and Muslims are in bed together. They hate Christianity. <clears throat> and you know, not to forget to mention that most of people who they are here, they don't really. 
uh, support us. You could be better job sleeping. What are you trying to pour with those those false rooms? Ibrahim, you are just being stupid. Now it's time for you to go. Anyone can make an it's uh, what what is that? And anybody can we need an, we need interpretation now. This guy is making Quran. What is that? Look, this is Ibrahim. Ibrahim, he was thinking, and Ibrahim, he have to put his thinking in writing. And this is Ibrahim after thinking. So if this is Ibrahim after thinking, how Ibrahim was before thinking? Go, Ibrahim, go. Take a hike. Stupidity is amazing. False rooms, what does that mean, false rooms? And why you are here, Ibrahim? As long as this is a false room. Why you enter the false room, Ibrahim? Somebody grab you, Ibrahim? Be honest with us, Ibrahim. What happened? You were a child and somebody grabbed you from your hand? His name is Muhammad? How you end here, Ibrahim? This is false room, Ibrahim. And Ibrahim, you are here for the last two hours. Why you don't call me to show everybody how false it is? But I will tell you, Ibrahim, you are a potato. And you are a coward. You cry. And you don't dare to say goodbye. Didn't you say just 15 minutes ago you are leaving? And then 15 minutes before you says you are leaving? What happened to you? The guy, he keeps saying he's leaving. <laughs> he must be an Arab. In the Middle East, you know, we visit each other for like 10 minutes, let's say, or one hour. And then we stand two hours in the door. Two hours in the door, honestly. I'm not, I'm not, ask any Middle Eastern person. Two hours inside or one hour visiting you. Then when they go to the door, especially Middle Eastern women, you know, I mean, they block the whole building door and here they get excited to talk again. It's like a new, new visit now in the interest of the building. This is what Ibrahim is doing. He said that I'm leaving, you know, and he is here for the last <clears throat> can you show a hadith about where Muhammad he take a shower while his daughter help him uh, cover with his with curtain uh, let me try to see what you are talking about because I don't think the hadith is exactly what you are saying uh, yeah, I need to remember exactly what the hadith is saying to find it you see, because when you when you search for a hadith, you need to remember at least a line, uh, the whole line as it is in Arabic in order to get. And I don't really remember. We did not use this for a long time. But there's the other hadith where uh, Aisha she was taking a shower, and there's half curtain between her and uh, uh, two two men. We can try to find them. <coughs> All right, look like we don't have any, like we are, uh, it's district for life. This is uh, here to debate like this. This is really not God channel. If you claim to be a God person, a Muslim, a, a Muslim talking about God channel and uh, a God person. Okay, was your prophet a God person when he said to a man, go and bite the penis of your father? Mr. Muslim? Was your prophet a God man when he said, go and bite the penis of your father? I'm going with you, you know, your dear logic. Do you think it was a God man talking when he said, go and bite the penis of your father? Now, Mr. Muslim, he will play dead. He heard nothing, he said nothing. He will play dead now, he will stop moving his tail. Disrespectful. Disrespectful. A Muslim talking about disrespect. Biting the penis of your father is respect for sure. Oh, what about suck? Go and suck the clitoris of a lat. Ah, that's a good one too. Hmm. Or what about calling your parents najis? 
Isn't it your prophet? He says, and mushrikun and najis, those who don't believe in Allah, they are filthy, which means his parents are najis. Disrespectful, look how big the words are. Deep. Hmm. Ibrahim saying he is an idiot. Oh, no, sorry. He's saying he's an adult. Sorry, adult. I, I thought, Ibrahim, you were saying. He, so you're an adult idiot. Then. <clears throat> I love it when a Muslim, he, you know, he give us a lecture about respect. They call us pigs, monkeys, najis, filthy, kuffar, liars, worse than animals. There's a Muslim, Abdul, he made a video. And he was having, a, he have a cows behind him. He said, look at those cows. This is what the Quran is saying. They are the same as animals. Those cows are better than the Christians. And the funny this Abdul, he's driving a BMW brand new, or Mercedes, I forgot. He have a nice phone made by the kuffar, a car made by the kuffar, the food he ate is by the kuffar. And he said, what the benefit of the kuffar? And the cows he's pointing at, those are, you know, the one who take care of them is the kuffar. What is the benefit of the kuffar? The microphone he used is made by the kuffar. YouTube he used made by the kuffar. Internet he used by the, made by the kuffar. And he is saying to us, a Muslim Abdul, who is clean his ass with the three rocks, is teaching us what is the benefit of the kuffar? Nothing. Want to debate the Trinity? For sure, call me. Call me, Mr. Muslim Trinity. A Muslim, he would debate about Trinity. That's it. They are stuck with the Trinity. You want to see how Muslim how, how funny they are with the Trinity? Call me. Call me and tell me about the Trinity. <clears throat> you want to call? A Muslim, you know, all the Muslim, by the way, when they debate about Trinity, they think they have like uh, uh, they are superior by having we believe in one God. Who cares if your God is one or two? He is one idiot God. You want to debate about Trinity? What does that mean? What, what, what does that mean exactly? You don't accept that there's a three a trinity and one God in the same time? Who care? The question is, if this God is exist or not, is your God is exist? You have one God, but this God, he said, there is sperm coming from the backbone. Okay, here we go. We don't have trinity in Islam. We have a God. He claimed that the backbone is where the sperm coming from. Your God never heard of the word testicles. So the word Trinity is hurting you. Well, at the same time, everything in Islam is about Trinity. Everything in the garbage of Muhammad about Trinity. How you do evolution? Trinity. Everything you do is Trinity. How many times you can divorce your wife? Three times. How many days uh, uh, Mary, she, uh, she fasts? Three, three days. How many day, uh, days uh, Zachariah, he cannot talk? Three days. I mean, everything is three days. You want to be about Trinity? This is what they, you know, they, they, they think. And this is why, by the way, when the Christians, they debate Muslims, the Muslims, they love to debate about this point because they think if we speak about the Trinity, they can't attack Islam. They think that they have a superior point. That because of their stupidity and that because uh, if they can make really, let us say, uh, 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 an argument against a Christian that because the, the Christian in front of them he does not even even know how to take the topic so what the Christians they do they start giving them verses from the Bible look at the Trinity look at the Trinity don't do that why you want to do that they believe in the Trinity or not who care don't believe in it still that will not change anything that your God is a stupid even your God Allah when he start talking about himself he say three names I change any Muslim why he says three names Allah himself is multiplier for Trinity. The age of Jesus, X3 time, 33, X3, 99. You open the first verse in the Quran. What do you see? Three names of Allah, Trinity. Why three names? Any Muslim can answer? So this is what you are worried about. You are not worried about a God. He claimed that women have a sperm coming from their ribs. It's okay. It's okay. But we have one God. Uh -huh, okay. Uh, we have a God who called that man is a sperm coming from the backbone. It's okay. We, we still, we have one God. Uh, okay. That makes sense. Okay. He have a God. He claimed that uh, uh, Suleiman, he died standing for a year. And nobody noticed that he is dead until the termite, they ate his stick. But remember, we have one God. Uh -huh.
You get the point there. Mm. You have a God, he promised you. If you believe in him, he will give you endless penis. So what? Endless penis is good. Still, we have one God. Uh -huh. You see, we are winning. We have one God with endless penis. Uh -huh. Okay, we have one God, but he keeps saying, if we want to take a partner, a wife, we will take it from us. Hey, Abdul, how you can solve this problem? You have one God who want to take a partner from us? Any Abdul? <laughs> we have uh, we have uh, one God. We have one God. <laughs> so anyone from those who believe in one God is willing to call me and dare to call? TikTok, TikTok. You are tiki talking. Do Allah have one TikTok or two TikTok? Why you don't text me? Don't you want to debate about Trinity? Trinity, you want to debate about Trinity? <laughs> See here, here they are in this evity. <clears throat> Any Abdul? My friend Muhammad, he never take a shower, watch shower. But this is about, the, this is the book of height, not, this is not the book of uh, shower. Yeah, but the Muslim, they will say to you that this is his daughter, and so what? But remember, uh, Fatima, she is not his daughter. Muhammad never have kids. Do we have any Abdul? I want to translate your book into Turkish language, but I don't have your book in English. Do I have to buy? Text me, text me in uh, in Patreon, Mart, Mert, uh, and I will tell you what to do. All right. <clears throat> See the idea of having one God. Okay, it's one of many ideas. There's people who have many gods. But there's people who worship Satan. They believe he is one God too. So having one God or two God, three God, it doesn't make any difference. It's, a, it's a, just a silly, stupid argument. If, if there is 10 million gods, and if they are exist, then they exist. You cannot even say no. Can you say no? Can you choose how many God there is? So the whole argument is silly. It's a stupid. And we Christian, we believe in one God. So if God cannot be three, per, three like, you know, in Arabic we say aqnum. It's not really correct to say person, but this is what in English they use. So if God cannot be three in the same time he is one, then God cannot be God. Because there is something impossible for God. So here you see how silly the Muhammadan are. When they want God, they call him almighty. When they want God is not almighty. God is all idiot. As an example, <clears throat> how can Allah have a son? The Quran says. But this verse proving that Allah can't be God. Why? Because God do not need to have a girlfriend to have a son. And the one is a question in the ability is Allah himself. So look how stupid the one who made the Quran. How can he have a son when he never had a, a, a girlfriend? Who is the one who says, how can he? Allah. So if Allah is saying that Allah cannot have a son unless have a girlfriend, that means Allah is not God. Do you see it? Allah is asking how Allah can have a son if you don't have a girlfriend. So Allah is like me and you. He need a wife. But look in Christianity, we don't have a God who have a wife. None of us we believe that God he married Mary, and they have a baby. <laughs> you know. So here the Quran is proving to us that this is written by a man. He is a stupid. Not only is a man, he's a stupid man. 
because this is not a logic to explain to us the concept of your stupid God. So here we go. You have one stupid God. He's one, but he's stupid. Because when God, he says, how can he? And the funny always, he could talk about himself and the other person. Okay, why Allah is talking and says, how can he? Obviously, the author, he could forget to switch. This isn't a guy who made the Quran. How can he? Muhammad is copying Waraq ibn Nufal. How can he have a son? But when Muhammad, he claimed that the one is talking is Allah, Muhammad, he made it a diarrhea full of poopoo. So do you see how you refute yourself with the stupidity? How Allah can be the Almighty, yes, yet he cannot have a son without a girlfriend. My God, he can have a son. Hmm? Yeah, for sure, Muslim, I don't have knowledge, but yet you are not daring to call me to prove it. People can see who have no knowledge. My books is printed around the world, my friend. My books are printed and translated to many, many languages, and I have no knowledge. And nobody dare to debate me because I have no knowledge. And you prove it. Here we go. All what you need to do, say he have no knowledge, and that's it. My knowledge is gone. What about you call me and show everybody that I have no knowledge? As long as I don't have knowledge, you can win the debate really easy. It will take you maybe a few seconds. Allah will support you. But anyway, every statement in the Quran proving that Muhammad is a stupid. Look at this stupid verse here. وخرقوا. Have you ever heard of heard of خرقوا? وخرقوا له بنين وبنات. Just to show you how stupid the Quran is. This is a chapter six, verse one one hundred, and this is a translation. They invented for him sons and daughters for who to shaitan. Okay, but just to show you how stupid this donkey Muhammad is. We go to different verse in the Quran. The Quran says shaitan shaitan have babies. The stupid Muhammad, <laughs> he claimed that shaitan, he have a babies. So in one verse says that people, they invented babies for shaitan. He have daughters and sons. In the other verse says he have. Do you see it? This is a chapter 18, verse number 50. Take notes. Allah, he says, are you going to take him and his children's, the shaitan? Do you see it? People, do you see it? So in this verse here, chapter 18, verse number 50, it says shaitan have babies. In the other verse, Allah making fun of the pagans saying they made babies for shaitan. Hello. <laughs> you see it? Who is the stupid? Which one, which one of them is correct? Chapter 6, verse 100, or uh, uh, chapter 18, verse 50. The same God who is making fun of the pagan because they, they claim that shaitan have children is the same God he is saying they have babies. This is a God book. And then you go and read the interpretation. They will say to you that Allah, he created a penis for shaitan in his life, in his right thigh. And he have to be in the right thigh, right? And the vagina in the left thigh. So when Allah, he cast him out of heaven, shaitan, he if himself. So he shake this into this, he do nikah. Even the word nikah is used there. So he do nikah by entering this into that. 
and then he lay 10 eggs and each egg have 70 shaitan and shaitana which means 70 male and female shaitan but remember we have one god alhamdulillah we have one god this one god this one idiot god <laughs> they think they think when they say we have one God, they have victory. That's it. We have one God. My friend, my friend, I have one middle finger. Is that God? How silly is that? You know, when I come to America, I was driving in the highway for the first time, and I don't know really what the speed limit is. And I like I was looking for exit to direction, so I was a little bit slow. And those Americans, they start putting their hands out of the car. I said, man, I'm famous here. Everybody is, is everybody saying to me, hi. And I don't know why they have a finger coming from the window. Like, eh, you know, like, what the heck? And I say, hello, hello, hello. Like, you know, like a Borat, you know, in the highway. You know? Yeah. True story. Your God is a middle finger. Actually, your prophet, he says, I am the same as the middle finger. Call me to show you the hadith. <clears throat> oh, Lord have mercy. Any Muslim? Any Abdul? <clears throat> All right, well, we have victory as usual. And those cowards, they don't dare to call me. And then after I hang up, they will say, look, this guy, he refuted him. And this guy, he refuted him. And uh, we have a million response. And there is no response. Petito, petito, petito. Betito, 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 betito. We have one God. We have one God, brother. We have one God. Ah, you are learning the tactical. I like that. Look at this guy. He is learning the tactical. My friend, keep learning. I think he will spend the coming twenty years learning the tacticals. You know what? I'm so glad that you are focusing in the tactical because you, Muhammad, and usually focus in the testicles. I'm not sure why you are focusing on the tactical, tactical. Are you sure? <laughs> tactical. <coughs> That's a lot of this. This is a lot of tactical, tacticality. He is learning the tactical. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Just wait until he learned the tactical, then he will hit in the testicles. That's deep. I mean, it doesn't take you long, just 20, 70 years maybe, you know. Then the tactical will transform into testicles like Allah, he transformed the sperm, the semen into congealed dead blood. Mm. Okay, Mr. Tactical, I'm happy for you. Tick, 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 tick. You can take take as much as you want. Anyway, people, I want to say thank you for being here. You should open chat to Muslims and atheists. Well, isn't it the chat is open for everybody, my friend, wise man? Everybody's welcome. You know, everybody's welcome. Do we ask people who which religion? Everybody, you know, Muslim, atheist, Hindus, Buddhists, who care? All of you are welcome. Anyway. Uh, if you like me to come soon so fast as you see YouTube is fighting our videos so share the videos let us have a, a, a good number at least to make me see that those people here though they are watching they support my channel they are sharing links around in Facebook wherever and they bring a lot of people otherwise I don't feel like you know I, I, I need to come you know and remember we need to bring more people new people so they can call me don't you want to see a real fight? <laughs>
a, hor a horrific fight. <laughs> Bring me Abdul. And the only way you can do it is by posting the videos around and inviting people to join us. Christians, Jews, Hindus, Muslims, everybody is welcome. And remember, don't hate the Muslims. We are fighting the garbage of Muhammad. Muslims are victims, you know? Muslims are victims. Even ISIS for me, by the way, they are victims. Those people, they think they are serving God. They think by killing, they are serving God. That's what Jesus said. Time will come and people will think by killing you, they are doing favor to God. That's what Jesus said. Remember that. So we pray for the Muslims. We are here to save them. We are not here to hate them. There's no point of hate. You know, when we go in war with, the, with, uh, with those who do jihad, then you can do what war do, you know. I was in the army, and I will be willing to go to the army again and again and again. We fight terrorists, but we don't we don't want to be killers. We will kill those who want to kill us, but we are not going to kill people. We want to save the Muslims. We want to win them. We want to love them. We don't want to hate them. All right. And if you are a terrorist, then we deal with you differently, accordingly, as you know. So I want to say thank you for everybody. I say may the Lord bless you all and uh, uh, I want to remind people that Christmas is coming and I am thinking to start my new Bible channel after the Christmas or maybe even in the day of the Christmas we will see so uh, pray for that I'm just thinking about it not sure yet uh, I want to be sure that this channel will not take uh, take me away from the target because you know there's many people they can teach the Bible uh, but not many people they can do what I do when it's come to Islam. You know what I mean? So I want to be sure that that will not take me from the biggest mission. There's many great Christians. They know the Bible very well, very well versed, and they can do an even better job than me. And if I share the gospel with you, it's going to be a totally different new way from the way you know it. Because for me, I like to live the Bible, not to teach it, which means People, when they read uh, verses in the Bible, they just read words. For me, I like you to live the words so you can understand the words, not to read them. You have to live them. Jesus, the Messiah, our Lord, is the walking, talking, living Word of God. So in order to walk with Him, You have to listen to him by walking with him, not just listen. So the walking, talking, living word of God need a person who is willing to listen, to walk, and to live the word of God. Otherwise, the word is just words. So the Messiah, when he speaks, he is not just teaching wisdom. He's not sharing words. He's not making speeches. Because many they can make speeches, great speeches. But he was telling you how to live his word. How to be united with the Lord. So I have a different way of teaching the gospel. And I don't want to read for you a verse and tell you what the verse means. I want to read the verse, and all of us will leave the verse, and then we will understand what the verse means. See, the, the, the word of Christ, it is self-explained. You do not need me to explain it. But the condition is so simple. You have to be living as a faithful person from your heart, the words you read. Otherwise, they are just words in a book. So, the words have to go and live inside you, inside your heart, then those words will be active and they will be something very useful for you. Otherwise, words are words. Thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you. And we will see you soon again. Christ is Lord. And Islam is a scam. And we prove it every day. Take care.
But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. 